Let's do it. Let's do our year in review, guys. All right. Ooh, all right. Excited. All right. We may as well just start at the top of the list. Uh, Ashley. Mm. What's your best new character of the year? Okay, so I'll start off with thank you to Anna for this suggestion. I had originally <laughs> put down, um, I was having a real hard time with this question. Um, I didn't, I, there, there's a particular um, waterfowl based game that was very popular this year, but I never played it. Um, so I didn't want to count that game's character as my favorite. So I was having a real hard time. I was thinking about some of the, there's some really funny characters in, uh, in the new Jedi Fallen Order game that I was originally toying around with. Um, but finally, Anna uh, helped me remember um, Pat the Alligator from Later Alligator. Um, Pat, Pat is so adorable. Alligator. He's so dang cute. There's, in fact, every character in that game is just so super cute. like iconic and like memorable and just super adorable. But Pat the Alligator is the main alligator, and God, he is he is so dang cute. And he's got a little hat. And he walks around like without being able to bend his shoulders. And, he and just his family his is apparently out. trying to kill him. And he thinks that he's going to get assassinated and rubbed out by his family. Um, and it's, it's, it's a great game, honestly. Everyone should check out that game. It's all hand animated, and uh, mm-hmm. and it's just super adorable and and charming. Yes. Pat okay. the alligator. All right. Pat. Pat. Yep. Look at him. He's adorable. He's so cute. He's, he's, he's so, so cute. cute. Look at Pat. him. Is that Pat, by the way? That's, that's, that's Pat. Pat. That's, okay, he's okay. Got the I want to make sure I got, got the, the right hat. picture. All yeah. right, all right. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of alligators to choose from. There yeah. is, but if you got a scarf and you got a hat, then that's Pat. Oh, my gee, he <laughs> is missing his hand. Oh, my God, no, is that spoilers? Not. No. Yes, his, he is. He's, he's, he's got a nub. No, he's holding something in his hand. He's holding a flashlight. A flashlight. It's a flashlight. Oh, he's holding a flashlight. Okay. Yeah. It look, because his fingers are, like, jagged like that, it looks like he's missing an arm and he has a bone sticking oh, out. Oh, no, no, that's just how their hands are. They're little, uh, okay. their fingies okay, are I'm little gonna... triangles. Hey, I'm glad we cleared that up because there were going mm. to be comments, all right? It's adorable. The game is too My cute. My goodness. All right, Pat the Alligator. Pat Jasmine. The alligator. Super cute. Yes. My best character we, for 2019, as we all uh, know, is that goddamn goose. Honk. That GD that goose. goose. That goose. Honk. Oh my goodness. I yep. mean, have you ever met a more sassier waterfowl <laughs> in your entire life that gives no shits to anybody inside that town? <laughs> it does what it wants. And uh, when me and Enna played it, we were mother to baby Moses, our sweet child in the picnic <laughs> basket. We took it everywhere. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. My goodness. That game was amazing. And I mean, we could talk about that game for a second because that yeah. game was just like a fun little indie game. And I think we were all looking forward to it. But like the world embraced this yeah, game. Yeah, that, that's what mm-hmm. was the most surprising part was how massive that game got instantly after successful. release. Because, well, I think like, everybody just wanted to be a, sort of an asshole. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, but, but you that's it. 2019, I, everybody wants to be I, an asshole? No, everybody wants to be a I, goose. I, no, I, I, I think that it's, we, we we had been seeing this game being made for years, so we were kind of, we were super yeah. excited for it, for the same reason everyone else was, right? Which is just like, mm-hmm. that's so dumb, but it's incredible. <laughs> like, yes. when someone says, hey, you want to play a goose game? And you're like, what? Yeah, you're just a goose that goes around and does stupid goose things. I mean, I got to see that. Like, I gotta know what that is, you know? And I feel like they they nailed the sort of characterized animation Mm -hmm. of it Mm -hmm. so well that you just, you you couldn't help but giggle and laugh as you just waddled around as the goose. Um, And what just happened to my webcam there? Yeah, Rick, yeah, oh goodness. (laughs) Did something pop Um, up? Yeah, Yeah. when you were scrolling through something, it it, it made Um, Ash's thing turn into something else. (laughs) <laughs> but also, I gotta say congrats to the uh, to the devs because we played their previous game um, where you were the two headed people characters. Uh, oh yeah, uh, push me, pull you, push me, pull you. Yep. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it was actually uh, Goose Game was published by local Portland developer or Portland publisher. Um, crap, Woo-hoo. I can't remember the name. Play Playtonic, Play Motion, Play something. They're I the think- same people that are making um, that weird handheld that has a gear, like a, a cry. Yeah, yes. I played it. I played it um, um, at PAX. It was really fun. Yeah, House House is the name of the developer. Does anyone know the name of the, the publisher? They're, it, whatever whatever that handheld Game Boy is called, that's the name of them. I can't remember what it's called. Um, Panic? Panic. No, Panic. 
It's panic. I don't know if it's, I don't I'm guessing. It's yeah, it's in Portland, Let's Oregon. See. Yep. It's in Portland, I just looked Oregon. It up. It's House yep. House and Panic. It's on the website. Yep. That's, those are, and I'm then filmed at Victoria. right now. Yep. But yeah, uh, that cool. goose was incredible. Um, you just felt powerful in that entire town. And even though most people chased you away, it was just really nice to kind of come back and do something evil and then like giggle and walk away. And yeah, seeing what you can get away with and seeing what like the reactions of the different characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of replayability with that game, actually. There's Lady a speed running the answer portion to it, too. What's what that? A speed run? There's a speed running aspect to it. Someone actually beat the game in like two minutes. It was incredible. Huh? What? Yeah. How even? You, you can basically, glitch through some walls. You yeah. can. But that's like not doing all the quests, right? No. You, they, just, that's just like you, unlocking you, everything. You get the check marks, though, still. Like, they were able to, like, glitch through a wall, grab the thing, glitch through a wall back, and still, like, set up their picnic and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. Spe Speedrunning is weird to me. Like, like hmm. at a certain point, it's just like, you're not even playing the game anymore. You're trying to break it. Yeah. Speedrunning should just be called breaking games. Competitive game it's, breaking. That's what it is. You're basically uh, trying to access the code that you know you can exploit it and then just what? bounce through walls. Not really so access. Fun. I mean, there's Sometimes. certainly some. There's some get like the yeah. original Mario speed runs do actually do some things where they are modifying code just by playing it. Mm -hmm. But um, like if you ever watched the original Mirror's Edge speed run, it's all just about finding seams in the walls that they can jump yeah. through. Um, yeah, yeah. The best speed run is a uh, prey where they literally get the glue gun and then they just make a like a. A ladder going all the way up to the top. Hmm? They, they beat they, the game in like they 20 minutes. They use that gun in a way that's not intended for it. It's yeah. Um, it's anyway. so good. Goose yeah, game. No, I, th I, think, I think that like it, there's a difference between we don't have to go on a huge thing about speedrunners but just because like, there always are classifications so there's like any percent speedruns mm -hmm. there's 100% speedruns and then yeah someone in the chat says there's glitchless speedruns. Yeah. So it's like mm -hmm. glitchless are usually held to the highest kind of like Herald, right? Which is mm -hmm. like, yeah, you're you are playing the whole game. You are doing the yep. whole thing, and you're doing it super fast. Whereas, mm -hmm. you know, any percent, that's like, yeah, go fl fly through a wall and land in Narnia. You know? Yeah, that's yeah. fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. I just want to throw all the speedrunners under the bus because I love speedrunning. I think it's great. I think it's awesome. I, it's a lot of fun. I th I think it's a uh, it's really interesting to see those glitch speedruns because like yeah. I mean it still takes quite a lot of talent and work to pull them it off. It does. Oh, oh heck yeah yeah yeah. The, like the I number manip it is, manipulation is insane to me. It's a legit competition. Like I yeah. I do not want to discredit speedrunners at all. Yeah. No. But like okay. but watching the speedrunning like I don't know I. To me, like, I want to see somebody beat Mario really fast. I want to see him go through all the levels and see how mm -hmm. fast they can do it, how much faster they can do it than me. Like, watching people find glitches in the game, I don't know. To me, it's just not yeah. satisfying. Yeah, yeah, that's that's why you got to watch them glitchless. Them glitchless are, yeah. it's impressive yeah. as heck. Yeah. All mm. right. Next character? So, Price, Next up you, is Price. Mm -hmm. What do you got, bud? So I, I had a couple, but the, the one that I think really landed to me as being like a character that came out this year that I felt like is one that should be put on a pedestal is a little a little baby named Baba. Baba from Baba is you, is a sweet little adorable boy who has the power of changing uh, the way the universe works just by rearranging words. Um, but also Baba's just super cute. Like, I, honestly, I was thinking about all the characters. Uh, you know, Jazzy took Goose, and I think we mm. all knew that Goose, <laughs> come on. But I was like, what is a character that I could see you know, being able to be taken out of something and put into other stuff. What's some, you know, you could sell plushies of a Baba. You could put Baba on shirts. You could put Baba as a secret character in some other game and people are going to be like, oh, Baba, you know? So I think Baba's a great character. Just an, a, an adorable little character. In that game, if you never played Baba, it's a lot of fun. My, I was going to say, like, I know we, we talked about playing that one as a group. Did you yeah. play that one, Price? I, yeah, I have it on my Switch. Um, oh, okay. Just played it and didn't record it or anything like that. Just played it for myself. Um, and I never beat it because it is a programming game. And you always end up getting to a point where it's like there's a puzzle that just breaks you. Uh, <laughs> okay, but Percy from Arcade Spirits, I think, yeah, you know, we're going to leave that guy out of here. I don't know. He's pretty cool, I guess. Um, but yeah, I just think Bob is great. I don't know. Did any of y'all get a chance to play it at all? No, I, didn't. I wanted I know to, that I, we, we That's a game that, like, me and Jazz have always thought about playing like two player a little bit, or like that's one that I toyed around with us doing like a one or two off as a group, but uh, mm -hmm. just never got around to it. Never got around to it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. I would strongly say, you know, if it ever goes on sale for cheap, you know, whatever like that. Oh, yeah. yeah 100%. It's a fun little, fun little game. Yeah. There's and then, been too many games this year. Yeah, I know, right? 
Yeah. So then I'll just quickly say honorable mention goes to BB from uh, <laughs> the Death Stranding because, uh, I mean, come on. They found a way to make a game where you carry around a baby and like an umbilicus in front of you. <laughs> there That's are so ridiculous. many characters in Death Stranding or just so many times I wanted to use Death Stranding, but seeing as I've never played it, I was like, I can't in good conscience. Yeah. But like like every like every character from Death Stranding should be like on the list of best characters, right? Like Conan O'Brien's in the game. I know. Right? That's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then other honorable, honorable mention, uh, Horus from The World Next Door. And pretty much every character in The World Next Door. That yeah. game's got yeah. incredible characters. That game yeah. does. Yes. That's it. That's my take on, on character. All right. Mm. Um, well, that wraps up. Oh, no, it doesn't. It's me. It's, it's me. You, it's me. You. It's me. I uh, have a best character of the year. Um, my favorite character is uh, Parvati from... Outer Worlds. Gotcha. Um, I talked about Outer Worlds. I I had so much fun playing this game. I mean, I don't want to spend too much time talking about why I love the game, but I loved this game because it's a Fallout type of a game, um, but like condensed. Like they made it like beatable. It's like twenty hours done, and there's no romancing in this game. You romance vicariously through characters, and Parvati is the character that's like the romancing one, but she's just delightful, and her just delightful optimism was mm -hmm. incredible. Like, I don't know. It just it, it made me smile having her on my party. Um, yeah, so for those reasons. Can we, can we take, I mean, like, for Provider is a great character, but can we, can we take a moment since we're talking about decade stuff a little bit to talk about the rise yes. of Ashley Birch? Right, yeah. uh, sure. Yeah. Her. She's great. So she, She's she voiced great. Provardi, and uh, mm -hmm. she obviously, you know, people know her from Horizon Zero Dawn. They know her mm -hmm. from um, Tiny Tina from Borderlands. But I mean, yep. good lord, if you guys don't know, check out Hey Ash, what you playing? Where she got her start yeah. with her brother Anthony Birch. Um, making just silly YouTube videos, actually making videos before YouTube was even a thing, making Destructoid videos. Um, yep, or yep, crazy. Yep. Was it on Destructoid or GameTrailers.com? Game trailers. I think it's they, a Game Trailers. For a yeah. while they were on Game Trailers, yeah. I watched yeah. them there but for like a year. Good for her. She wanted to be a voice actress. They uh, Since he worked at Borderlands, or worked for Borderlands, you know, at... Um, Gearbox. Gearbox. Uh, Gearbox. Basically, Gearbox has this thing where anybody that works within their company can, if they want to, become a voice actor in their games. And of course, her brother was a writer, so they're like, let's get her in there. And then she just took it more and more seriously. Now she's like in OKKO. OK she's in like so many different like cartoons these days and other like, not just video games, but actually like cartoons and medias like in Disney on Cartoon Network and like Nickelodeon yep. shows. It's, it's uh -huh. insane. She has gotten real big. And I'm yeah. Yeah, she's for real. She's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I like, like seeing her at kinda, the kinda, video game like awards. every every new AAA game. It's kind of hard not to find her being one of those characters, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, love yeah, I mean, she's Aloy, and love so, Brevardi yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. What probably my favorite character from Outer Worlds. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, and I mean, like she she got big because she was silly but like yeah. seeing her play characters like Parvati and seeing her play characters like Aloy who yes. I didn't even realize she was Aloy at first like because she's just talking like her normal self you know yeah. um, <laughs> she's capable of just playing serious and uh, it just shows the range that she's got it's pretty incredible mm -hmm. yeah um, super stoked to see her as <laughs> successful as she is Convoluted in chat says someone has to replace Tara Strong eventually. Don't you dare! It, yeah, she's a, she's <laughs> wonderful. She might live like a what's her name June Ferre. Tara mm -hmm. Strong might just be like June Ferre, live forever, living yeah. until the '90s, still doing cartoons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Um, so that's been best characters. Now we're gonna go into best sequels. All right. So I think first up we've got uh, Ash. What's your best sequel, man? I, I actually had a hard time with this question. I'll admit there's there weren't wasn't, a ton of amazing sequels. There was not a ton of an amazing sequels that really spoke to me. So I'll say of the ones that I played, I I think that I got to give it to Borderlands Three. Um, Borderlands, Borderlands 3, Three, I think you know no, it has problems on its own, but I think uh, it is a significant improvement improvement over every previous Borderlands, like a significant improvement over mm -hmm. every previous Borderlands. Um, it's got 
very wildly, uh, dramatically different uh, environments, which was always my biggest problem with all the previous Borderlands, is you are stuck in this, like, brown-gray area forever. Um, Especially in, yeah, the first one. And then they replace, like, brown with cities, and you're like, okay, now I get brown with <laughs> cities, okay. Exactly. There's so many different environments in Borderlands 3. Honestly, one of the things, the, the main problem I have with Borderlands 3 is I actually get, like, gun fatigue. I get so many new guns so oh, yeah. rapidly. Yeah, like, totally. Within, Within 15 minutes, I have to like, I have to go to a vending machine to just like get rid of my entire inventory, basically. Like, mm -hmm. anyway, um, it's still a great game, and I do think it is like the best of the sequels that came out this year, in my opinion. Okay, fair. I have not played that game yet, so. It's fine. I haven't either. I mean, yeah. it's definitely one of those games that I'm surprised we didn't play together. It's unfortunate because there are these games that were like, it's a four player co op game. We know it's not really going to do well for the channel, so there's not much. Um, opportunity for us to play it together, you know, especially mm -hmm. with it being sixty dollars. If we wanted to play it True. each, then we'd have to buy it all. Um, yeah, it's it's one of those things where I'm sure that two years from now, it's going to go on an amazing Steam sale, and I'll we're going to play way. it together. Yeah, Rick, I'm guessing I, I, I'm 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 going to shoot my shot. Next stumpness, I imagine all four of us will play it at some point. I bet Because I'm guessing yeah. it will go on sale somewhere mid-year for cheap enough that we will all pick it up. And then there's going to be a thing. And there's going to be DLC. What all four of us play? What all, what yep. will all four of us yep. play I, this one? I guess I, we'll all play I, I, it. I'm, yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna shoot my shot and say yeah. that both Price and Rick have not read the Discord message that I sent probably a month ago saying that... Oh, no, I know. We get it for free. Yeah, we get it. Exactly. for free yes. with Borderlands. Yes, I know. I get that. And I also get Outer Worlds. I know, Ash. I know. Love you. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot my shot awesome? and say it's, that we always have issues with scheduling, and we probably won't be able to play it together. <laughs> well, right. No, that's, that's what I'm saying. It'll have to be. Won't be until next year because it'll be. Mm -hmm. like, it'll be until Stumpness. Exactly. When we when we it'll are like, oh, all four of us are gonna of play a game. It'll be yeah. like all four of us are gonna play yeah. a game that we'll never uh, be able to put on the channel because no one watches it on finish. our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So I yep. guess we'll just do it on stream. Yep. Yep. All right. Yeah. So Borderlands <laughs> Three, Bryce you, or uh, Ashley's uh, pick for uh, best sequel. Yep. Um, and because there are so few, mm -hmm. I find us uh, aligning Bryce. I, I don't want to spoil anything. I'll, I'll say. Let me say my 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 backup one, and then yes. you and Jazzy and the three of us can discuss the one that we all well, said. Say first. your backup because I want to talk yeah. about that too. Because I kind of yeah. wanted to use that, and I was yeah. like, "Can I?" But yeah. let's so here's discuss what, it because I want to tell you exactly it. why. Yes. So uh, one of my two options for best sequel of the year was Resident Evil Two, which obviously is a remake, but it is also mm. a sequel in the Resident Re Evil remake series because they remade Resident Evil One, and then they've remade Resident Evil Two, and next year they're remaking Resident Evil Three. So yes. It's a squeakle. <laughs> um, and it's incredibly made. It's, um, it is, uh, I loved uh, survival horror games in the 90s mm -hmm. through like yep. the early 2000s. Like yep. it was the Resident Evil games and like Dead Space and Dead Space 2, incredible. Yep. And then there, yep. there was just sort of this like period of time where like survival horror just became jump scare horror. Like it yeah. just became Five Nights mm -hmm. at Freddy's and, and totally. you know, Emily wants to play and all that kind of stuff. And there just were no good survival horror games being made that I was playing. I've heard Enemy Within is really great and I've never checked it out. Um, but Resident Evil 2 remake, man, it took me back. Oh, it was so good, know, so well made. I know people will correct me and be like, it's not yep. the first survival horror. And I know that yeah. Resident Evil isn't the first. I know that like Clock Tower was the first or like there were others uh, before uh, yeah. Resident Evil. Um, Alone in the Dark, but, I think is the first one actually, yeah. Resident Evil is definitely the first game uh, that popularized the survival horror genre. Um, In the West, yeah. yeah. For sure. So, um, yeah, like, Resident Evil 2 was so good. Hearing you, like, explain it that way, justify it that way, I should have mm. gone with Resident Evil 2 because it definitely was a great game and I really enjoyed the hell playing it. Um, I love the Resident Evil series. I like the Resident Evil 7 series. Um, I, I, I wish that they would have just gone with eight and like continued that like sort of reboot thing that they had going because resident evil seven was kind of a reboot of resident evil one mm -hmm. but yeah agreed with you but with that being said what is your pick actually no jasmine it's jasmine sir oh well like we said we all have the three of us agreed in we the all same put it on there we all game. put it on there. we all talked about risk of rain too and yep, i think yep. When I was thinking about sequel, I was thinking, is it like a sequel, like a direct, you know, storyline sequel? And I was like, you can, mm. yeah, you could say that. Or you could say like a sequel that improves upon the original. 
Mm-hmm. Definitely Risk of Rain 2 improves upon Risk of Rain 1, which was, you know, pixel side scrolling game. Mm-hmm. This one actually is like full on 3D. They completely, you know, changed the aspect of like how you actually look over your shoulder. They have the same monster, you know, monsters that you fight, but it's definitely a much bigger improvement. And I thought that was a better sequel. In that, I mean, like, I, and- in that regard for that definition. Yeah, and, and I'll say, I'll agree with you, Jazzy, and I'll say even more, I would say it was a highly ambitious sequel to say, yes. we are going to completely change mm-hmm. the, the the gameplay because we're taking it from 2D to 3D, and it's yeah. like, man, what, what I hated Risk of Rain, and I still hate Risk of Rain. I do not enjoy playing the original yeah. Risk of Rain. Yeah. Risk of Rain 2, I love. I mm-hmm. love Risk of Rain 2. I play it all the time. I have streamed it a number of times, and that's one of the few games that I play for myself. <laughs> if yep. you, I don't, I can't even think of how any, how better you could encapsulate what mm-hmm. a good sequel is than to say, yeah, you took a game that I hated and made it a game I love. Yeah, exactly. And spoilers, bravo, bravo. We all picked this. That I mean, yeah. except with the exception of Ash, um, Jazz, Bryce, myself, our best sequel of the year is Risk of Rain 2. Mm-hmm. What were you gonna say, Jazz? I'm just saying, I think it was, yeah, I really did not like the first one. It was not fun to me. And mm-hmm. because it was incredibly hard and uh, the side-scrolling aspect of having going up and down different levels was just too yeah. much. But this one is just like, it feels more fluid. It actually feels complete. And it's just, it improved in so many more ways than just one, you know? Yeah. So Yes. I didn't yes. hate the first one, but it never really captured my attention. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember us watching the trailer for Risk Rain 2 when it, they first announced it. And I think that we all sort of had the same opinion, which was like, how? What? Like, yeah, really? Right. Exactly. You're going to go from a 2D to a 3D? Like, this doesn't seem doable. Mm. And not only did they do it, but they made it work so friggin' well. And this game's not even 1.0 yet. Right. It's still in early access. Yeah. And the updates that they release have been so good. They've been such a and they like from day one roadmap. They did such a great job explaining all of the updates, what they had in store mm-hmm. and right on time religiously. Bam, bam, bam. Updates have been released. Uh, yeah. And like Jazz said, like a sequel, like how do you want to categorize sequel? Do you want to categorize it as like really you improved from this first one to the second one i can't think of a game in recent memory that it has improved so much and mm-hmm. like price said so ambitiously as risk brain too so yeah i think it out. i think it's that's great. totally fair it's worth it yeah because yeah. like uh, like you said rick like i when i first saw the trailer i had zero hopes for it yeah i really <laughs> yeah. thought it was gonna be dumb like they were gonna like i was like okay so that's the end of uh have the risk That's series. the end of that. Yeah, okay, well, not, it, it was Rude. nice while it lasted. Well, I mean, like, honestly, I just didn't expect much. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Like, I, I think it, it looked very strange. Mm-hmm. I'd actually be intrigued to go back and watch us react to it and be like, D- <laughs> I can imagine I said something like, why don't you name it something else? Yeah. Anyway, because it just seems so different. Exactly. But, but I mean, we didn't even touch on that. Like, it's definitely different because they took it from a two D to a three D. But they included so much of the original in Risk yep. of Rain two that even yep. if you were like die hard into Risk of Rain one, like all those little um, those trinkets and the enemies and stuff, they're all there. Mm-hmm. Yes. The the and the, the enemies like. They do look the same. Like after I played Risk of Rain 2, I did pop back into Risk of Rain 1 again just to like look at it. And it's like, yeah, I mean, the magma worm looks the same. That weird golden yeah. guy looks the same. That weird floating head looks the same. So they did a pretty yeah. incredible job of keeping the same aesthetic while making it 3D. For sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Word. All right. Well, there you got it, guys. I don't know if that's uh, if that's controversial or not, but I mean, uh, three of us picked Risk of Rain 2. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I, I couldn't oh, agree more. Yeah. All right. Now we're moving again. This is a this is a tough category this year as far as exclusives go, which is strange because there have been so many exclusives. But mm-hmm. have there been really good exclusives this year? And then have there been really good exclusives that we've had a chance to play? The and next Rick, category is best exclusives. And let's clarify what we mean by exclusive, right? Because we talked about this ahead of time. Because when people hear exclusive, they think console, console. exclusive. Mm-hmm. Yes. But we mean any kind of platform exclusive so you know an epic exclusive or Mm -hmm. you know some you know other sort of exclusive like uh what is itunes what do they have apple play apple apple arcade 
Apple Arcade, yeah, that kind of thing. Let, anyway. Let's just take a couple minutes here. Let's, yeah. I mean, we'll try not to dwell into too long, but I think it's important because we're talking about uh, a decade of gaming, right? Mm -hmm. And this is something that's pretty new this year, but it's probably going to become more of a thing in the decade to come yep. is this like exclusivity when it comes to like companies right because mm -hmm. within uh, pc alone we have all of these like epic exclusive not at so much steam exclusive but there's a possibility launcher you know? exclusive you know launcher, launcher right yeah uh yeah. yeah you've got your um you know your uh ubisoft launcher and your mm -hmm. your uh, Bethesda Origin launchers launcher, or whatever. You've got your yeah, right. Bethesda launchers. Microsoft Game Pass. But also, you've got these people entering into the game sphere that typically weren't. Like you had um, what Sinar Wild Hearts exclusive to the Apple Arcade, right? Which was a pretty big one. It, it was actually nominated for a lot of awards at the Video Game Awards this year. You know, and then you've no got Google Stadia. Now. Mm -hmm. It's right, but it was, right. and I and I think it's fair to include those, you know, because mm -hmm. everything these days is timed exclusive. Mm -hmm. I think that, with the exception of like consoles, which is the OG exclusive, mm -hmm. most exclusivity when it comes to PC is going to be timed six months a year, and I think that we're seeing that seep into exclusives on console too. Death Stranding had a year exclusivity, you yeah, know. Let's put it this way: Halo's on Steam, bro. That's all yeah. you gotta know. Yeah. I mean, that was timed exclusive. That was like ten years, but it was ten timed years timed exclusive. Exclusive. But it's there, you know. Yeah, yeah. And like, I, I'll say that like I'm when when I first answered this question, I assumed Rick meant console exclusive, and I'll just quickly say like my my first original answer because I had a really hard time with this question. Like my my original answer was the uh, the we the 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 Switch Ring, Ring Fit. Fit Adventure. Ah, Ring um, Fit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was like. That's that's the exclusive it's one neat. that I've been playing. Um, I mean, and that's a really good answer. Yeah, because that's but, exclusive um, because you can't get that can't part anywhere, anywhere else. else, and it will yeah. always be exclusive to Switch. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But uh, after I talked with Rick, I was like, "Does does would you consider Epic to count as well?" And he was like, "Yeah, you can make the argument for that." Um, I changed and then my it got easy for you. <laughs> I, I originally uh, and this this game will pop up a couple of times throughout this conversation we have today. But uh, Manifold Garden is my answer for um, best exclusive. It is a timed exclusive on Epic. Um, I think it's also out on Apple Arcade, so it's not necessarily. But on PC anyway, it is exclusive to to one launcher, um, and it is a incredible. Uh, puzzle game that's sort of like in the same vein of something like The Witness or something like Portal, um, where you are using the environment uh, to try to figure out how to just move on and get through particular rooms, get through and find find a particular exit um, or find a particular switch. Um, it's incredible. I was streaming it a couple of nights ago and I've been playing it for myself uh, for I don't know, the past month or so. Um, and it really, it really did take me by surprise. If you guys have not seen this game, it looks like the scenes in Inception where you see the <laughs> buildings collapsing upon themselves, because that mm -hmm. literally does happen in this game. It's, it's sort um, of Escher-esque, right? Like very MC, MC Escher. Escher. Yeah. You can, you literally do change gravity a whole lot. You walk up to mm -hmm. a wall and press a button and suddenly you're up on that wall. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a big part of the puzzles. Another thing that I struggled with, I have a fear of heights is that you uh, you end Gonna up having to fall a whole lot. And yeah, has that helped you with your fear? No, you know, not, not quite so <laughs> much. Immersion therapy. Not, it's not like quite in so Minecraft, much. you know, um, every time you jump, you still feel that 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 butt clenching like fear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The it's, it's developer, terrifying. The developer of the game, William Cheer, was nice enough to actually be in our stream a couple of nights ago. And, oh, uh, cool. I cool asked beans. him, you know, I told him, I was telling chat, like, I have this extreme fear of heights. And he was like, I do, too. I was like, why did you do this, William? And he mm -hmm. was like, immersion therapy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah there, you go. Just, there uh, you go. Just to remind everyone, uh, immersion therapy doesn't work for everybody. <laughs> yeah. no, I mean, it, it for does many people, work, apparently. For many people, it makes things worse. It really yeah. depends on the person. I just want to point that out. Because uh, like, a couple people like, oh, we'll do it. did point out, Manifold Garden is apparently available on a couple different platforms. No, so it's it's out just on Apple and on uh, on Epic right now. That's it. But it is I, uh, going to be. So, somebody uh, said it's on Switch, but apparently no. they must so be it's, mistaken. It is coming out uh, like first half of next year. I was I know this directly from the developer being mm. in our chat. First ah. half of next year is going to be on all the consoles. 
And then um, October 2020 is when it'll release on Steam. So other launchers on PC. There you um, go. There you go. All yeah. right. Cool. That's neato. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need. Anyway. Ash has been saying. Ash has been telling me to play this game for a long time. I know Price is a big fan of The Witness yeah. as well, and so uh, yeah, I, think, I was going to say you, you guys are into those puzzle games. Yeah, love any, them, anyone love that them. likes The Witness, I think, would love this game, and anyone that just like loves symmetry and architectural mm -hmm. like amazing yeah. uh, structures should play this game. It's I just want to go so back and play Mist over and over again. Can we just do that will, together as a group? And I will also say, and this is, I'm not trying to be a shill for Epic here, but if you are a fan of games like Manifold Garden, you really need to have an Epic account because they've already given away in the past like three months, they've given away The Witness for free and they've given away um, uh, Cube and Cube 2, I believe they're yes. called. Uh, hmm. Similar puzzle type games. They've given away several games in the genre for free legitimately like there's so much you can get <laughs> yes. i just the epic hate i get it a lot of people don't like it but man the amount of games i've gotten for free so many great games for free like i just i honestly I, I i can't get it anymore just just deal with the fact that there's multiple launchers the epic launcher yeah. is not not a bad one there's like, worse well, launchers by this point so and yeah. at this point yeah. it's like you, we have there is no way to stop the onslaught of the launchers everyone wants their own launcher like everyone wants their own streaming platform yeah. i'm sorry you're gonna have to have netflix and disney and hulu and and cbs access and you're gonna have to have steam and you're yeah. gonna have to have uh epic and you're gonna have to have uh ubisoft and just Fortune get ready just get Uplay used to it just get used to it <laughs> once one company proves that it yeah. is viable, viable. Yeah. to have your own launcher and compete then guess yeah. what everybody's yeah. gonna do it yeah. um it not saying it's good, but it's the reality we it's live the, in. It's the future. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. That Jasmine, anyway. you're... Um, oh, wait. Actually, hold on. I've got the wrong um, picture booted up here. I grabbed the wrong Ru picture. Ruh-roh. Ruh -ro. Ruh -ro. Jasmine, hold on. I got to grab the right picture. That's the one I wanted to have for you. Let me just move that. Agreed with Anna. <laughs> We all know which no, one the worst, the worst launcher is. Yeah. <laughs> Origin is by far the worst. Oh, Microsoft man. for and uh, Microsoft for as good as is pretty bad too. For as good as Microsoft mm. is at making consoles, it is unforgivable that their launchers are still so bad. Like, mm -hmm. I, I'll give them credit at least that their newer Xbox beta launcher is so much better than their Windows Store. The Windows Store is it's better. Yeah, it's I've still had some huge issues. Yeah, Windows Store is unforgivably bad. Xbox is at least it's what I want a game launcher to be. It still has the annoying thing that you have to have Windows updates enabled. Yeah, your, which but. destroys your computer if you yeah. if you guys do what we do, like YouTube. Yeah. video drivers and audio drivers are very important, and every time Windows yeah. updates, it's like, yeah. oh, yeah. you yeah. like these drivers? Let's let's uh let's yeah. uh let's mess these up. <laughs> We have a fine-tuned system, and like if one thing goes wrong, yeah. it just has this cascading effect. Yeah, you guys By probably the have way, been noticing this crackling. That's from a Windows yeah. update that we cannot figure out how to fix. Um, and Screwed up all I, of our discords. The next time the I restart my computer, guess what? I get an update. I just yeah. saw that notification this morning. Great. I, Great. I was like, God, let nothing go wrong this stream, because if I have to restart, it's going to be a thing. Uh, okay, Jazz. So um, your exclusive is... I picked Pokemon Sword. Because Pokemon is never going to move out of the Disney or the Disney, the Nintendo yeah. realm. It's always going to yeah. be on a Nintendo console. So that is probably by far the most exclusive exclusive you can get. Uh, but I have to say, like, I was excited for this one because it has been a while since there was a good Pokemon game. I really enjoyed X and Y. When Sun and Moon came out, they had drastically changed so much of it that I just didn't feel like I was like attached to it. It just felt too mm. different and too weird. And so I, I think I mean, I've heard the story from a lot of people too. It's just like they sort of just gave up on Sun and Moon because it was just not what we were sort of used to in a Pokemon game. So when um, Sword and Shield came out, it was like perfect. It was like we had like um, wide open areas. You can actually see the Pokemon walking around in the fields. And you also have some form of like uh, interaction with other players around the world because when you're in the mm -hmm. wild you can actually see other people like biking around and doing something and you can go into raids with them which is really fun oh, that's neat. I beat this game in like three days I was so into it and uh, I have to say that's pretty why it's my, my favorite exclusive for this year Oh, we just got a donation, you guys. Oh, Poppy, Poppy ABJ just donated $5.43. Let's make the 3K, 30K. 
<gasps> happened to Thank Eagle you. PS. Thanks to some gamers and admins for working so hard. Mm. Seriously. Yeah, you know, let's take a second real quick, guys. Um, because it's been uh, you know, about an hour. We <clears throat> we are raising money for the Rainforest Trust. That's what we're doing. Tenth day of the 12 days of stubness. Uh, we've been doing an amazing job. You guys have been doing an amazing job. We're at $27,428.43 right now. It's incredible. This is such an amazing charity. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry, I've been eating popcorn and I got these. <laughs> I had to eat though, I've been sitting here all day. Yeah. Um, it's an amazing charity that uh, dedicates their work to preserving the rainforest and these threatened ecosystems. So when we say ecosystems, not just the trees, but all the little critters that live there within, guys. And they do it really well. On Charity Navigator, they have a 100% rating, guys. So you can rest assured that they are using your money as wisely as possible. And we are not touching this money, guys. We're using Tiltify to handle our donations. So when you guys make a donation, it's going straight to the rainforest, all right? No funny business. Um, so Thank you so much for that. Uh, and also, let's just recognize the hard work of our moderators. Yeah. Uh, Poppy mentioned our admins, our moderators. Uh, we've been working hard. They've been working just as hard, guys. So mm. we've got that mod love. Dancer's foot just dropped that <gasps> mod love emote, guys. Drop some mod love, all right, guys? Show your appreciation. That'd be so, so nice. Mm -hmm. And with that, um, let's go ahead and get back into it. So uh, we had... Jazzy talked about Pokemon Sword, so then I guess yeah. I'm up next, yeah? You are up next. Price, what do you got, right. bud? So, y'all, for my exclusive, I, I did struggle as well um, with this one, but I landed on a game that I played relatively recently that is presently exclusive to, and I think may continue to be exclusive to, uh, the Epic Games launcher, and that is Ancestors, the Humankind Odyssey. Um, I am a big ecology fan, and I, obviously we are doing uh, raising money for the Rainforest Trust, but I've always been a huge, um, I've always been hugely interested in evolution, and I've always been really intrigued by how could you make a really cool evolution game, right? Like Spore made a very simplified and very kind of like um, stripped down evolution, let's make it fun kind of thing. Ancestors, seems really grounded in reality and you really only focus on a very small snapshot of evolutionary history but I mean it's basically a game with Assassin's Creed style controls where you play as a chimp like ape like creature some kind of Australopithecus or something living in the jungle trying to survive with your family so that you can uh, build up through generations uh, have children you slowly uh, evolve your mental capacities and each generation is born with like a little bit more abilities and whatnot based on what their parents generation did it's just really neat and the way that they structure it is also fairly accurate for how you would model such a thing um and also man oh man did that game send me into a blood rage so many times oh my gosh you're just walking around you got a stick in your hand and then a tiger jumps out of nowhere and you're like come on man i just want to feed my family and then i go up into the top of a tree and then i challenged a bird to, to the death and I killed that bird. <laughs> it was great. 10 out of 10. Take that bird. What right, did that so bird yeah, do to answers. you? <laughs> he ate my grandpa, Ash. He ate <laughs> my grandpa. <laughs> you weren't there. It's in the intro. It's a great game. It's a really neat game. <laughs> yeah, this game has intrigued me. Um, I definitely want to try it out at some point, and I agree with you, Price. When I um, played Spore, like, that game was overhyped, and Spore was an okay game, but that was one of those it's games. Fun, it suffered you know. from... It was like... Um, um, it was like... Uh, uh, it suffered from its own uh, ambitions. Like, it was too ambitious. Hello Games. Um, yeah. um, um, oh, no Man's Sky. No Man's Sky. It, yeah. it was No Man's Sky, exactly. No Man's Sky wasn't a terrible game, but man, did they just hype that game too much, and there were a lot of things that were missing from the final product. So seeing a game where you actually get it to evolve in like a proper way, that's that's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. Yeah, it's, it's a neat one. Dope. It's a neat one. So yeah, <laughs> Ancestors, keep check it out. Check it out. It's pretty great. All right, and then uh, for my exclusive, I had a really tough time here. Um, again, I mean, we talked about it at the top, but like having, oh my goodness, Jezbel just reset for 26 months in a row. I'm home from Seattle. The wedding was great. My friend was so happy, and now there's snow everywhere. Oh, snow everywhere. Snow. Oh, geez. Geez. Snow, oh, snow in Seattle? No, she's home oh, from crap. Seattle. I from think she's Seattle. in Canada. Right. Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Excuse me. Yeah. Okay. Love there's snow, snow everywhere. Yes, that's true. Um, all right, so um, I picked Ace Combat 7. Which I didn't uh, know that you played this one, Rick. 
I did. I actually, I went and bought it at, before it actually, and it was exclusive, timed. It's out on Steam now, but before it was, I actually went and traded games in the old-fashioned way at GameStop and picked up a PS4 copy of this. Okay. Um, because I've been a fan of the Ace Combat series for a while, and uh, the last few, Ace Combat 5 and 6, were kind of snooze fest. Ace Combat 7 was actually a, a return to form, and a lot of fun. And honestly, I just love playing these, like, flight sim kind of games. And Ace Combat 7, as far as they go, like, with the exception of, like, the ones that are, like, train simulator, where it's, like, legit, like, you're flying passengers through the air and autopilot and get them and land them safely. Um... It's it's the best, and uh, honestly, it was slim pickings when it comes to exclusives this year. <laughs> we had a lot of different platforms that had a lot of different exclusives, but like having an exclusive of the year was very difficult this year. It, honestly, it was, it was slim pickings. It was difficult just trying yeah. to find a list of exclusives. Yeah, yep. I would yeah. love more and more of these uh, game journalists to just give me a long list of all the games that came out, and then allow me to <laughs> just. <laughs> Sort yeah. them by yeah. if they're exclusive I, or not. Yeah, I can, found can, I found I, a list like that. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say, can we maybe make a a, uh, a a proclamation out to game journalists everywhere? If you have made a list that was like the best, mo the the games that I am most anticipating in 2019, don't update that article later in 2019 saying the best games of 2019, because that's what all game journalists seem to do. And then you're looking through this list and you're like, none of these games actually came out this year. <laughs> Last of Us 2 didn't come out. What are there you are talking so about? so many games, like if you go back to February when a lot of uh, sites were releasing like their most anticipated games of 2019, half of them did not come out. Right. There were so many games. Like yep. there were there were some that were like Beyond Good and Evil 2. I was like, you really thought that game was yeah, going to come out this year? if you thought year? that was coming out like, this year, why? you were a fool. You it's were a because fool they probably took. tended to put a date on it and then they probably extended it. But even when they, I mean, because they announced that at not this year's, but last year's E3. And yes. immediately we knew, like, that game's coming out in, like, three years. Like, at best, three years. Because mm -hmm. they, there was no gameplay. It was a tech demo. Like, they had right. the trailer. That's all yeah, they like, had. I Nothing still, playable. I still don't believe that Cyberpunk's coming out next year. It's no chance. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm in will. the same boat. I'm I, in the same I boat. I still don't believe it. <laughs> like, um... I, I'm with you, Ash. Like, I could easily see them being like, no, 2021, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we will and then see. it really comes out in 2077. That's when we'll really get it. Yeah. Oh, my yep. goodness. Then, and then they're like, ha, I fooled you. Cyberpunk <laughs> today. That's what they'll choose. Cyberpunk includes the entire time. Yeah. Like, Document. You, what, you guys didn't pick up on that? <laughs> All right. Oh, man. Keanu still looks say, the same. To, to Ash's <laughs> That's point, true. Ash, similar That's why point. they hired him. Similar point, because here's what I ran into when I was looking for lists of uh, games that people were looking forward to in 2019. I didn't find the updated list that is now just my favorite games that came out this year. What I kept mm -hmm. finding was, here are my anticipated lists, like when I searched for it in Google, and then when you go to it, they've updated that page to be, here's what I'm looking forward to in 2020. So it's like the Google search term still thinks it's the thing from 2018 or 2019, but then yeah. you go to it and it's the one for 2020. It's like... Exactly. New page, friend. New and my page. Thing is like, I don't Archive think that that's your work. No, I don't think that that's Google's fault. I think that those <laughs> no. websites are actually putting it's, it in there to get those hits. And exactly, it's ooh, the websites it's, are doing it, it because so it's mad. already got views. It's already got a number of clicks. <laughs> so if you just change the actual title on the page, but don't change the metadata, then it will remain as a highly searched thing. Even anyway, mm. yes, I hate it. we know how we know how they're you're cheating the system there, uh, journalists. Journalists. All right. On to the next category, guys. Best game setting. And this one's tough. Like, honestly, next year, I think I'm going to change this category. It, it got grandfathered into this year. I like but it. I like it. Let's talk it's about the best game setting. I love it. So this one, a boring answer from me because you just heard me talk about it. But I picked Manifold uh -huh. Garden again. Um, originally, originally, Manifold Garden was only listed here. It wasn't listed in Best Exclusive because I originally picked the, the Switch game. But anyway, um... Manifold Garden. I'm gonna I'm gonna gush about it again. It's amazing. The environment will take your breath away because you start indoors in that game, and the moment you step out and you see this level, this this structure that you have just gone through, and you take a look at it, and then you take a look out into the distance, and you see that same structure repeating 
over and over again, and then you look down and you see the same structure beneath you and above you. And if you fall off of this structure, you fall back down onto it. And that's an actual mechanic in the game that you have to use many times to get to different places in that structure. It's incredible. The environment is so good. Go play it. It's <laughs> <Garden>. <laughs> Oh, oh my, goodness. my goodness. That's why making a compelling case for Manifold Garden. Do it. It is really fun to see like a, a, a like an area that you're walking in fractally repeat over and over again. And no matter how many times you jump in that direction, you always land back on the, the place yeah. that you were just at. Mm -hmm. I believe it's the developer said minor. that their engine repeats the structure 128 times. Um, Whoa. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. That's yeah, a lot of times. Mm-hmm. My goodness. Mm -hmm. All right, Jazzy? Jasmine, uh, your best game setting? Uh, I had two of them, but honestly, Later Alligator is probably the best game setting. Uh, you're in Alligator New York. Everybody's an alligator. It's all hand drawn. <laughs> it's super damn cute. Um, and like, what I love about it is it's uh, the animation studio is Small Blue. They're, you know, they, they do like Spider Man or, you know, Peter Man and Batman. Uh, not only do they put themselves in it in that sort of thing, but they also put in like other YouTubers as like <laughs> crocodiles yes. or alligators. Nice. And it's just, it's so damn adorable. Uh, honestly, if you guys want a really good point and click game, I would choose that yes. one. It's, it's super wholesome. It's incredibly, um, sweet. And the animation is just, it's, it's so like you just fall into it. It's just so good. And everything, you just want to look at everything because everything's so mm -hmm. finely detailed. Um, everybody has like little quirks. It's just, it's super cute. I know that um, a question that we get often is like, what game should I play with my kids? Is this one that this they should one. play with their kids? It's adorable. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah, like, this one would be really good with kids. It's yeah. very wholesome. Like when you actually go and talk to his family members, each one wants you to do a specific task or like a puzzle and they'll give you a little bit more information about what happens at the event. And uh, the puzzles are like as simple as doing like a sliding puzzle or, you know, swatting flies away from a guy while he's trying to uh, meditate. And it's, mm. it's 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 good. Every every puddle, uh, every puzzle is um, sort of made for the character that you're talking to. So cool. um, my second setting is Plague's Tale Innocence. That game sort of came out of nowhere and me and Ash like ate it up when it showed up. Uh, you're in like, what was it, like 1440, like France, like really like far back in the history in France. Mm -hmm. And there's just like rats everywhere and it's destroying the countryside. People are getting killed. Um, it's just this terrible, terrible plague that's just like, uh, ri like just destroying all of this French countryside. And it's really interesting to be in a setting that that's far back in history. Mm -hmm. and um, sort of just trying to figure out like what's going on why are these rats here what why are these people chasing us what can we do so it was really fun gotcha yeah in my head when you when I saw that on your list I was yeah. like wait how is that not there's worst game setting it sounds horrible <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's like it's cool because there's some really nasty parts yeah, but yeah. then you go uh -huh. out to the countryside and it's just sure. beautiful Right, it's For like sure, that. Yeah. The juxtaposition yeah. makes it even more beautiful. I totally yeah. get that. I yeah. totally get that. Yeah. <laughs> Those are two just, very <laughs> drastically different games. Like one's super yes. cute, and one's a bunch of rats that's going to eat your face off. Yes. Yeah. Oh man. And uh, I similarly, if if I can just roll into mine. Um, yeah. 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 I also in. picked two games with two kind of very different settings. Mm -hmm. um, so the first one being the world next door, I thought that Emrys uh, was absolutely gorgeous. And I, I love anything that is like stylish. And, and like when I originally went into art school and everything, I was focused on character design. I've always been focused on character design. I don't care about uh, backgrounds and settings for one second whenever I'm drawing. And I love characters. And mm -hmm. the world of Emrys matched its characters. It, mm -hmm. it was it was bright and big and even though like the town was small and everything like that just the little details like the little um tram that you take to leave the town to go to all the other places like the the little like merchant square where you go over to like the the uh like the the soccer field or whatever and there's all the people on the track and everything like that like it was just such a beautiful little setting um mm -hmm. it's so unique and so different like it's something yeah. i haven't seen before and for me anything that to me feels like it's out of a dream like it's something that 
that I've never seen before, it always captures my attention. So I loved all of the design in the world next door. Like it's an incredible, incredible game. I agree um, with you, Price. Like, especially the character design. Like, um, my, what's like, the character I, with like his head opened up basically, and he's got like planets coming yeah, out of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but yes, we he had the eyes closed uh, and the green orbs coming out of yeah. his head. Cornelius. Uh, yeah, Cornelius. Cornelius. Is right. that his name? Yeah. It was almost. It was something like. It was something like Cornelius, but not quite. It was like Cornelius mm. or Corn Cornelius or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yes. But like, yeah. Br br brilliant artwork. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and of course, Horace, my dude. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which, just so you know, that's a cat skull. Literally, the artist, she had a cat skull in her apartment that's like a like a design <laughs> thing that she has around. And she was like, huh, I'll put that on a character. I just love the I story. I know it's a cat incredible. skull because we yeah. have some amazing um, fans that showed up to our meetup uh, uh -huh. at mm -hmm. PAX last year. Yeah. And they cosplayed yes. the yes. world next door. And one of them cosplayed Horace. And we were like, where did you get that amazing mask? And he was like, incredible. I bought a cat skull mask. And we're like, it is exactly the one. It is exactly the Horace. Yes, I, it, it works I believe so these three characters that we're seeing right here were who they were cosplaying as, right? Mm -hmm. I believe that that's who they were all. That yeah. is them. Yep. Yeah. I think that's that is all of them. Yes. Yep. It was yep. incredible. It was really, really great. An excellent really job stuff. too. The, excellent that, job. That uh, Horace helmet that he made was very impressive. Very impressive. Because yeah. didn't the jaw yeah, move too? Anyway, it was rad. The um, eye. The, the eye. No, the, the eyes lit, eyes up. lit the up. Eyes. Yes. Mm -hmm. the eyes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So so beyond World Next Door, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Uh, another gorgeous game uh, for me was um, Total War. Ah, Cornell. That was his name. Thank you. Cornell. Um, like Total the University. War, Three Kingdoms. I thought it was gorgeous. I've always been a huge fan of the Dynasty Warriors series. When I was in high school, I actually read Romance of the Three Kingdoms. That's how big into Dynasty Warriors I was. I was like, I'm going to go read this ancient Chinese folktale. Real dense, my friends. But... Uh, <laughs> That setting I've always been fascinated with. It's just this period of time in um, China where like everything, just like the the, the, the clothing and, and the, the, the designs, everything was just so big and bright and beautiful. And so um, what I love about um, Total War Three Kingdoms is that they actually wanted to capture that, even though the Total War games have always been so grounded in reality. So um, it, the game actually has two full different um, skin sets, essentially, that apply to the game. One that's called Romance and one that's called Realism. Realism looks more like a Total War game. Romance has big, bright colors. Uh, everything looks like kind of painterly. It's a really gorgeous setting. And I just thought that they did such a great job of making me want to play a Total War game, but have it feel all almost like a fantasy like it's it's all grounded in reality but it almost felt like a fantasy um so yeah gorgeous gorgeous game and the the, the cinematics and everything in it too like everything's done with these like really neat inky kind of like someone's painting it on paper as you're watching it incredible so uh yeah awesome. both of those games gorgeous gorgeous all right um and my uh, favorite game setting, I mean, I, f I feel like this is such a cop out, but honestly, like thinking about the year, I'm like, I just didn't play enough games. Mm. I swear. I rested on my laurels. I fell back on games that were either released last year or just what have you. But yeah. with that being said, this isn't a bad setting. No, I think you, my, I think you picked a good one. My favorite setting this year was Atomic Crops. Uh... Atomic Crops was an amazing game, this um, roguelite where basically it's like a post-apocalyptic setting and you've inherited your uncle's farm and you've got to raise your crops, but I feel like the, it's just like cartoony and it's bright and happy for this post-apocalyptic setting and uh, yeah, so Atomic Crops was a joy, and I'm really looking forward to all of the updates, too, because I want to mm -hmm. see what they add to yes. this. And also, just like the, the transitions between seasons when you go to mm -hmm. the town and you're buying your upgrades and all the little pixel characters and stuff like that, these anthropomorphic, like, fruits and vegetables, um, it, it was really cute, and it's, I don't know, it was, there was... There was something just like comfortable about yeah. it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I you... wanted to be there with them. They, yeah. It was very inviting, you know, despite it being a post-apocalyptic setting. Have you played it so, recently? Because they, they added a third year and they also added a new husband. Ooh. I got to get that new husband. Got to get the that husband, new husband. I think is a bug. What's it do? I can't remember. Because I know. I, never they got added, husband, I always they got added the wife. like pumpkins. Yeah. 
for the Halloween update. I think there's okay. newer ah. props now. They keep adding Overhead more stuff to enemy it. camps, four new enemy types, three new upgrades, mysterious shrines, and a new rare crop, the sunflower. Ooh, I, I gotta look into it. Is, update. Yeah. If there's a purpose to the cats yet, because no. I was collecting cats like nobody's right? business. Right? I don't know no, what they do either. It, they, I think it's literally, that's just supposed to be, like, that's your bragging rights. That's what shows mm -hmm. how much you've played the game, is how many cats you have and what tier your cats are. Because I got yeah, to, like, sense. the top tier cat. I got, like, one of the top tier cats. And it really is, you're just merging cats into the thing. It's like a mobile game, but it's incredible. <laughs> that's what I figured it was. I was like, I'm just spending these points for nothing, just... So I can have a cat. Okay. Yeah. I was I was much. hoping that at one point the cat would like join me, but I guess at least so far I don't think they have a purpose. We'll see. Maybe okay. one day. Maybe All one right. day. All right. But great setting. Well, that, that was my that was my favorite setting. Uh, was it? Well, it was Atomic Crops. Another exclusive game, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, that's true. That's true. Um, not my favorite exclusive though, which is strange. I enjoyed the game, but mm. not my favorite exclusive. Mm. Uh, Do without what you what you will. <laughs> so, all right. Next, next, up, uh, next up, to the next up, we're moving into the best uh, co-op game. Ooh, our bread and butter. All right, yeah. Th this will this will be interesting. All right. So I'll say, like, we we obviously we play a ton of co-op games, um, but I went into it with like, which co-op game did I play for fun <laughs> myself, not recording. Um, and with that, I think I've got two answers. Um, okay. I, th I think I, this is basically like my favorite online co-op game versus my favorite local co-op game. Um, okay. And so online, I'm picking Wolfenstein Youngblood. Um, that game got that a lot fun. of mixed reviews. Um, I think it, it was still very fun. Got, got, got a, an interesting reception from people that, that found it, I think, a little bit overly boring in some ways or something like that. But what I got to give uh, give it up to this game is that it is truly built for two person co op. You can technically play it alone, but you sort of have you you always have your other sister with you, and you sort of have to order her around to do things. Um, so I think it's really best played two player. Um, and the whole game, there's so many, I guess, sort of like cute moments between you and your sister where you're either just doing like a stupid little dab high five, or I don't know, you're in some ways, uh, getting a different power up that your power ups help your sister in different ways. So your your power ups mm -hmm. don't help you. Your power ups help your sister, and so you're you're getting these cool things that like you do a stupid little robot dance, and then your sister gains some some bonus armor or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, I thought it was a really really fun one, meant specifically for two people, and me and Jazz had a really fun time playing that. Um, mm, cool. My favorite, my favorite local co-op game is Unrailed. Like, I think I went into that game thinking that it was probably going to be a one-off for us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, 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 yeah. And now I'm, I'm fairly excited to, to play it whenever we do play it, just because I don't know. It's such a simple concept. Like, there's nothing new in it left for us to see. But I think that there's always strategy and improvement to be made to how simple its its gameplay is. So. I don't know, with such a simple and unique and charming game, I think it's something that everyone should play as a local co-op game. And it can be played yeah, online as well, but I think it's best played yeah. local. And I agree with you, um, like, I thought it was going to be like Crossy Road at first. Mm. Like, I was like, this is going to be like just one of those, almost like a, I mean, as far as the art style goes, I was like, it's like a Pac-Man 256, Crossy Road kind of like thing, you know? Mm -hmm. um, kind of like a mobile app released on Steam, but mm -hmm. it's not. It, there's a lot to it. There yeah. is, yeah. And, and I think that there is a lot for the devs to explore with it if they want to. I mean, I think what they have already there is very solid. Um, there's certainly more that they can continue to add to sort of like mix up how the gameplay works by adding different trains that add different uh, different mm -hmm. train cars that add different mo modifiers, add different worlds that cause different havoc to us, um, mm -hmm. and yeah, add maybe different different enemies or something like that that uh, that can present challenges. I think it's just a really solid all-around four-person co-op game. Oh, I just thought of another one too. Oh man, I'm gonna have to update my list. I know. I, know. I, I, see you adding I, I, more. I see you updating, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna go grab a screenshot for that real quick. Uh, <laughs> I just put another one in there. Like, come can on, I, I can put that in. Can there? I can I talk about just one more honorable mention, if you guys don't mind? Yeah. Um, go for mm -hmm. it. I'm, we got a lot just because I actually 
I, I thought about this as I was looking at the Epic launcher a moment ago when Rick was talking about Atomic Crops. And I was like, wait, did that come out on Epic? And I looked at my library and I realized, oh, there's a game that I loved this year that I didn't talk about, which is um, Satisfactory. Satisfactory is also, ah, I yeah. think, best played co-op. Um, and in an incredible version of something like Factorio and something that I think is just a super blast to play more more with your friends because you can accomplish your factory so much faster definitely um, definitely with additional help but also in my opinion just sort of like a feat of i don't know game engineering magic all in its own like i have a really hard time understanding how the heck they can accomplish rendering thousands of ingots on screen Fine, simultaneously yep. without it lagging that bad um in multiplayer you know so Good on you, Satisfactory. Yeah, Satisfactory yeah. was a lot of fun to play. Um, that, that was one of those games where, um, like, when it comes to playing games, there's only so much time we have in our free time to play games. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the game playing that we get done is when we play together. And what we play is dependent on how people like it. Like, if people like watching it, we're going to play more of it. If they don't really seem to like it and things don't get views, then, unfortunately, we don't get to play it as much. Uh, Satisfactory is one that I would have been happy doing like 50 episodes I of. I know, right? But unfortunately, it's just like something that didn't capture people's attention, so I didn't give it as much uh, love as I would have liked to, but I still am a part of the Satisfactory subreddit. So mm. I follow the updates through there, and I'm like, whoa! Yeah, These yes. updates are incredible! I've got to check this out. I've I'm going to be the odd one out. about it. Oh, yeah? You hated uh, it? I didn't like it, because you guys are so... Uh, productive and you guys do everything like right off the bat and it's just like uh, Astroneer where you guys are like pushing ahead with all the technology and doing all this mm -hmm. other stuff and I'm like okay cool I'm gonna go walk around and try to find resources so I'm just gonna waste time for three hours while you guys mm -hmm. are like focus like laser focus into things so which is so funny because it's usually the opposite like in Minecraft yeah. I feel that role where I'm like, you guys are gonna do tech stuff and like do yeah. this stuff. And I think it's because you're just more familiar with that game. But well, yeah, yeah, for some reason, Satisfactory clicked with me, and I'm like, well, yeah, and I want to build and the most I efficient thing. Before we play, before we played it with all four of us, Rick, I think you and I in particular, and also Ash on his own as well, we had all played a lot of it, and Jazzy mm -hmm. hadn't really played yeah. very much. So that's just that's yeah. honestly like. PSA to you, and when you play games with your friends, if you're an expert in a game. All right, don't play the game for your friend because they won't like mm -hmm. it. Here is a perfect example. Jazzy doesn't like Satisfactory probably because we kind of ruined it for her by basically like not letting her learn to play the game along with playing the game. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll put it right now. I have a couple of friends who they've talked about how they want to get into playing like Diablo and stuff. And they're like, yeah, and then I played with my friend who's like really good at it. And we just ran through dungeons yeah. for a couple of hours and they leveled me mm -hmm. up really high. And it's kind of boring. It's like, well, yeah, because you didn't play the game. Yeah. You didn't go and <laughs> yeah. have to beat the bosses and get your own butt there and have to struggle. Yeah. If someone just drags you through it, it's like, well, what did you learn? So anyway, Nothing. think about Nothing. that. Think about yep. that when you want to get your friend to like a game. Think about how you got captured into it, not like, "Ooh, I want to show you the end game. I want to drag Won't you to you the dungeon." Think of you your know? friends. Be Come on, consider it. So yeah. Anyway, yep. sorry we ruined that for you, Jazzy. <laughs> oh no, it's okay. It's just it's that and Astroneer. Those are the two games yeah. that are just yeah. like two people can oh fill those roles really fast. Oh, yeah. A third person might be helpful, but that fourth person is just like mm -hmm. I can either go and do the same thing <laughs> but <laughs> our world is becoming more and more laggy because we keep adding more things to <laughs> it. That's and the other part, yeah. That, yeah. that is true, that is true, that is true. And I will say, I mean, Astroneer was another game I think that Price and I played a ton of and I think that he and I both like it a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's unfortunate that, it, that we played it in a state where it just was not ready for four players, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. 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 That game yeah. also that had the connectivity problems. Because, I mean, they, they fixed it a lot. Like, it's very stable now. Oh, it's great Ashton now. Mm -hmm. an amazing game. You should all check it out. But when we were trying to play it at that time, not so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so Jazz, so best co-op game. What you got? Uh, I put Borderlands because I enjoyed the hell out of it. Me and Ashton did finish three. the game. I would say that it's a really good co-op game in the fact that, you know, it's meant for four players to fill all those different roles. You can still play a single player and still have a good time. Um, but like they really improve the co-op aspect of it, like the trading, having multi-levels so that you never feel like... Because the, the, the levels scale, so every time you're, you jump in the game, no matter what level you are, your friend will have the same difficulty as you will. 
Uh, mm. So, like, a level one can play with a level 30 and still have the same, you know, fun time. Right. Um, right. And so I, I really enjoyed it, and it's fun to, like, show off skins to your friends and stuff like that. So in that co-op sense, I re that's really enjoyable to me. Plus, um, it's just funny to enjoy a game with people that have the same humor, like, style, and that game yeah. is definitely really funny. Yeah. Uh, and then... Also, I picked Unrailed as the best <laughs> local co-op because we've been playing the hell out of it and it's definitely a game that it, it thrives on cooperation with your other teammates. I don't know how you play this game single player. I just don't think you can. You know, it's so, so funny that you mentioned that because I've wanted to do it for so long and yeah. I just never have. I attempted to do that today, FYI. Um, Did you? What was it? I, what I was, was it like? I, I was editing an episode and I realized I ran out of a particular music track. The game updated and like I it, it hid the music. So you file. jumped so, in just real so quick. I, to take I jumped a peek. in and you, I used the music that's in the um, the shop where you can pick an upgrade for your train car. Um, that's mm -hmm. the music that I use for for part of my Unreal edits. Anyway, I you can't play it single player. So I. I got one controller out and then I tapped on my keyboard to put another person in there. I attempted to do the first round single player and I made it like 90% of the way there, man. And then So you and can't play could, at all single player. I, I could not go fast enough. Like I I think it can be done, but like you gotta have a real strategy on how you're mm -hmm. gonna play. Because you gotta things. be well, yeah, that makes sense because you need at least two people and you need somebody picking and you need somebody chopping, right? So like that and then managing the, the water uh, of your car setting fire and uh oh, God, it was so stressful. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this game is incredible, guys. I, I I'm amazed at how much playability we've gotten out of it. Honestly, mm -hmm. it's uh, and I, I'm I'm excited to see what the updates are going to bring too, because they've been updating mm -hmm. it like pretty regularly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, each like, one has been like a nice. There's new carts. There's new stuff. Like uh, yeah. it's been a lot of fun to journey along. And like sure. I said about like games like uh, Satisfactory, where it's like people don't seem to like this. Unbelievably, people have not gotten over this game, and yeah. I only say unbelievably because it's a great game, but it's a lot of the same thing. You guys just want to see what we can do. Can we get better each time? And so as long as you guys keep watching it, we're gonna play the heck out of Rick, it. I, I think it proves that we are all out of touch boomers. We do not know what the people want. Right? <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. We yeah, we're just throwing we, stuff at the wall, yeah, and it just not only sticks. do we not know, but we want to complain that we don't know. <laughs> These <laughs> out of touch millennials they just don't get it all right it's all generation z now all right <laughs> we're old what do you got oh, price goodness. what do i got all right so yeah what do you um, got uh, honestly, you know, thinking about this list, uh, it was a little tricky because w when I think about co-op stuff, I often don't think about a lot of the stuff we play because in my head, co-op is a little more like moving towards a goal. And oftentimes we tend to like play more like brawlery type games, like we're alone, but together. Um, but mm. Rick and I just played this last week, an incredible, awesome, wonderful co-op game that I think if you're looking for a co-op game to play with one other person, Cat Quest 2, my friends, it's awesome. Like I, I Dude, had it's, no, it's true. I had it's no true. expectations. Yeah, I had no expectations mm -hmm. um, for Cat Quest Two. I had seen the original Cat Quest before. I'd never played it, mm -hmm. and it looked to me like kind of mobile gamey, like kind of a simple stripped down Definitely. action RPG. As soon as Rick and I started playing Cat Quest Two, I was taken away. I was like, "Oh yes!" And so we ended up playing. We beat it, and then we did a new game plus the next day. Like, I mean, it. We had a lot of fun. So I would 100% say Cat Quest Two, awesome action RPG, great characters, great sense of humor, tons of puns, tons of puns, and a ton oh, of yeah, replayability. A lot of puns. A ton, and a ton like, of replayability. Like yeah, a ton of replayability. Yeah, they just added a game plus mode, which actually adds a lot to it. And there's things that you can't unlock until you actually do the game plus. Um, and but yeah, it's super, super great game. Real yeah. quick about that game plus. It's not just, oh, new game plus, hit new game plus and start. It's hit new game plus and you set the level range that the next uh, challenge is going to yeah. be, right? So instead of yeah. the enemy starting from level 1 to 100, you can set it, they start at 50 to 150 or uh, 100 to 200. It's like Diablo. It's got yeah. so many difficulty levels. Yeah. You could play through the game a thousand times. There are levels of details that the devs put into that game that they didn't need to, but they did because it's a good game yeah yeah so uh yeah cat quest 2 honorable mentions uh, uh unrailed as well like everybody else said you know it's one of those fun games that you just sit down and you just start playing and you know you just 
it, it's immediately enjoyable, it's immediately fun, and I think for us, the types of games where I feel like we thrive and where we have kind of our best times are where we can each have like a job and we stick to that job and we're all communicating and we're kind of like doing this little dance. So it's like Overcooked's a lot like that, Diner Bros is a lot like that, and I think Unrailed is similarly like that. We each have gravitated towards certain roles and tasks and we've become more efficient as we've been doing that and so i appreciate like i couldn't imagine taking any other role like if i had to be the miner slash chopper i would i don't know what i would do with myself <laughs> well and, Honestly, and, I don't know. and same like whenever i try and help you guys move around tracks and stuff i'm always like oh no my head is gonna and it's just like scanners i feel like my head's gonna just pop like it's too much uh so right, definitely. i see that you added something else yes. to this list too you I got added a third one, choice yes i added one the last minute thank you waffle in chat for reminding me of this one because i do think this it is belongs, a good one actually i do think it belongs somewhere on this list absolutely the stretchers on uh switch and want to talk about exclusives there's a great exclusive for you uh yep, the absolutely. stretchers is like ash said earlier you want to talk about games that you want to play with like your kid or something like that it's 100 percent. kids it's, would love it's my this number game. one choice for a kid's yeah. game this year for sure like it's 100%. what you should play with your kid. Yeah. 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 And it's yeah. it's got this great combination of like crazy taxi meets like, I don't mm. know, one of the like human fall flat or one of those games where like you play a character who just like wanders around a, a world and just kind of does silly things, you know? Um, really enjoy it. I really enjoyed the stretchers. Definitely big, big hype suggestion from us over here at Stumped. Uh, it's a great yeah. arcade game, you know? Like, yeah. I, 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 I feel bad for kids growing up these days who don't, I mean, arcades still exist. They are few and far between, you know, but like when we were kids, arcades were everywhere. Everywhere you'd go, there'd be something to distract the kids. And this is definitely an arcade game. Mm -hmm. I mean, me especially, I grew up in um, Las Vegas where it's like every casino had an arcade, mm -hmm. you know, spent a lot of time there. Gotta have somewhere this for is, the kids, you know? Absolutely. This is a game that definitely fits in that arcade and it just, there's that instant nostalgia once I play a game like this where I'm just like I feel like a kid again yep. I feel at home it's just it's so comforting playing these kind of games yeah Stretchers um, I'm, I'm so glad that they brought it up because it it slipped out of my brain it wasn't <laughs> in my memories but yeah it, it's a good one word alright Rick um, and I am gonna go uh, you know again Price I I I feel weird saying that this is my favorite co-op game, but I had so much fun playing Cat Quest 2, honestly. Like, it's just, it's a stripped down version of like a hack and slash where it's not too difficult. There's so much to see and do. The story quest, if you just wanna like, just do the story quest. You can get this done in like eight hours. If you want to spend 20 hours playing it, there's 20 hours worth of content there. But it's also one of those games where as I'm getting older and I have limited time to just invest like hours on hours and hours straight playing games, I just have like an hour here, an hour there. This is the perfect game. I could just check in, pick up my controller, play an hour, and I feel like I'm having fun doing it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm achieving a goal I'm setting out to do and I'm like discovering new things as I'm doing it, you know? Um, and I... Price, you know, like you talked about, you know, you knew about Cat Quest 1. It just seemed like a mobile game. It seemed like it wasn't that exciting. If you actually go back and look on Steam, the reviews are overwhelmingly positive. People loved Cat Quest 1. And if you go look at Cat Quest 2, again, like overwhelmingly positive. People love this game. And we slept on it. Yeah, but it, we shouldn't have. And that's I think that that it, it shows like how easy it is to like underestimate a game or like or for it to just not catch you or whatever. Right. Because like. I there are YouTubers that I follow that played this game. There are friends of ours who have played Cat Quest. Like, I sh it should have been on my radar, and I just somehow yeah. just blocked it out because I think in my Honestly, head I was like, "This looks like a mobile game. I'm gonna ignore yep. it." So that's on yep, me. I judged the book. Yeah, yeah, I judged the book uh, by its cover, man, mm -hmm. and um, paid the price for it. But you know what? Not anymore because yep. we. Mm -hmm. Rectified that situation. So yeah, Cat Quest Two definitely my my favorite co-op game. But <clears throat> you know, obviously uh, I. I would have put Unrailed, honestly. I figured you guys covered those bases. Yeah. Unrailed. But, I mean, all the things that we talked about with CatQuest do, the same thing with Unrailed. We could have easily slept on Unrailed. Yep. And I'll be, like, um, we got a sponsorship from the devs from Unrailed. Mm -hmm. They were like, will you play our game? And I don't know if we would have if we didn't get that sponsorship. You know what I mean? Like, we might it have checked it out. Us. Yeah, but it's yeah. definitely one of those games where if we had other things to play, we would have been like... 
Yeah, we're gonna play this. Over it was it. also sort of hard to find. Like we, me, you and me, Rick, we found it at PAX by accident. Yeah, mm-hmm. like we were just walking around. It was just sort of there on the floor. Yeah. It didn't really have that much, um, like a uh, marketing around it. It was just mm-hmm. sort of here's unrailed with the rest of the Dedalic group. And we're just like, this looks interesting. And then we just kind of walked away. Like, yeah. not to throw yeah. shade on it. We was just like, it was, no. PAX is hard to like really play games. And graphically, so it, was it, just it looks so, like one of those games, like Crossy yeah. Road or something. It just yeah. looks like something that's easy yeah. to dismiss. But you, you you just can't. You can't. You got to give everything mm-hmm. the old college try. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yep. Now we've gone through our best co-op games. Mm-hmm. Now yes. it is on to our best indie games, guys. Ooh. All right. There's going to be some overlap here because... Of course, um, there always is. There always is, but I'm curious to see what we got here. <laughs> Starting at the top with Ashley. I don't think there's any indie lap, uh, any overlap in uh, indie games. Well, I mean yeah. overlap like we've already in other categories. Right. Other yeah, categories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Got the, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I want to start talking about my thing by telling you guys a story. That may not make <laughs> okay. sense, but it'll get there. Um, so... Back like three years ago when the movie Gone Girl came out, um, my mom, who I see movies with a decent amount, uh, asked to go see Gone Girl with me. And so me and Jazz went to go see Gone Girl. I went okay. into that movie thinking it was a rom-com, thinking that it what? was a just a, yeah. a ro- you know, we some had sort no of idea a, what it was about. A, a romantic movie. I had zero idea what that movie was about. And that is the way to see that movie. Yeah. Similarly, I had zero idea what Plague's Tale was about. I was like, where no are you idea. going? I was like, where are you taking this? <laughs> I, uh... I thought it was a rom-com. <laughs> I yeah. thought it was Plague's Tale, no. I, 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 knew, I, I knew that it was an indie game that was being talked about, <laughs> but, like, I thought it was something to do about curing plagues or something. Like, I had no idea. Um, and so I went into this game for that 25 month resub. You guys dropped some bears. I went into this game with like zero, like very low expectations and thinking that it was something completely different in my, I was just so blown away. You know, the level of graphics in this game, um, you know, I, I would compare it to sort of the, uh, Justin, what is that? That, um, I was about to say Hellgate, the, the, uh, Senua Senua? game. Mm -hmm. Um, Hellblade Senua. Hell, yeah, it's made sacrifice. by a small team, but like yeah. AAA quality graphics type of thing. Same thing here, I would say, with the Plague's Tale. Like, just so, so detailed and, and cool looking. And then the tech that they created for small spoilers here uh, the rat tornadoes that you literally control in this game. Um, rat nados? Just thousands. Okay, I, I had no idea about this. I am wow. Rick, okay. Rick stop listening. You can play the way she wants you to play. This is Gone Girl. Gone Girl was a rom com, Rick. Okay, <laughs> turn away. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I will agree though. When me and Ash went to see Gone Girl, not, n- neither me nor Ash have read the book, knew anything about it. We were like, this sounds like a rom com. We had no clue anyway, oh, what man. we're getting into. So, I was, I, I was I changed. Had zero- <laughs> I had zero idea what Playstale was about. It surpassed so many expectations because I had none. And it was just such a genuinely awesome story. Just so cute and loving of the story between a big sister and little brother. Um, and yeah, the, the freaking, the tech in this game, what you're able to do is so cool looking. Um, I gotta check this game out. Highly, you got me at Ratnados, all right? Yes, yes. Right now, yes. highly suggest this game. As people Thank are you, saying Pop, in chat, Pop, you for that dollar fifty donation. Thanks for everything you do, Stumps. Your videos keep me company throughout my thesis. Oh. Rainforest trust protects areas in my country as well. So hello from the Philippines. Oh, hello. Awesome. That's rad. That is someone rad. who can, Thank someone you. who is who is benefiting directly from this charity. I think that's awesome to have I love that it. kind I love of perspective it. I love come it. through. I just want to point out, Rick, in chat, everybody's pointing out Felicia Tornado. That's right. Yeah. yeah, this this is a game that literally the rat this, flute, the rat would flute. be useful. Rat flute the game. I'm pulling my rat card. It's right here. <laughs> I have it right next to me. It's actually called always the pipes close. of the sewer, but it the will always be called sewer. the rat flute. Yeah, the, the rat flute in my heart. All right, there it is. <laughs> rat flute in your heart. All right, my God, that that I can never uh, think of. So big yeah, mouth. Plague sale. 
Everyone, everyone should give PlayStation a chance. I think it's yeah. it's a fairly cheap game too. It's like thirty bucks. It's or probably something. on sale and now. Yeah, this is one like, of those games where I'm like, this seems like it price, could have yeah. easily come from a AAA studio too, yes. which is like, right? it's always impressive to see that from a uh, an indie studio, you know? What's crazy yeah, is I, it sort of like had no press around it when it came yeah, out. Yeah, like exactly. we, we were That's just why like, I had like no mm, knowledge of it. Um, yeah. yeah. And I, I sort of hope anyway that this team, there's been rumors that this team has now been bought by other larger people, but I, I do hope I that, that this team... Um, is working on a sequel. There has like been they, talks they were, of a sequel. There has been talks I mean, of a sequel. Been, there's been rumors, yeah. I mean, there's like, been rumors that they like, were bought by Microsoft and stuff like that, so. Yeah. It reminds me of like an early CD Projekt Red, like this studio, you know? Like they can sure. like easily make like The Witcher 3 in five years, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. lots of potential, lots of potential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. All right, so up next, best indie game. Jasmine, what do you got? Later Alligator! That game Later changed me alligator. so much. I love that game. It's. <laughs> There's so much to that game that's just so charming and cute, and oh, I've I, got to check it out now. It, it literally is like my favorite game, and you can't go wrong. Every time you see Pat's face, you just want to squish it because it's just adorable. It's so uh, cute. And like, oh, there is replayability Pat. in the fact that you have to talk to the entire family because there's just so many twists and turns. Well, you guys where... replayed it too, didn't you? We did. You, we you went back to... and we finished it. Because there's technically three endings, and mm -hmm. you really you want that best ending. You do. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, and it's yeah. just every time I see Pat's face, it's I just I can't I can't deal with it. Oh, sweet baby Pat, <laughs> sweet baby Pat. I, got, you I just gotta play that to, one now. Yeah, you just want to yeah. coddle him. You will you would kill for him. Because I, I haven't really watched your playthroughs, and I'm glad that I haven't. Because mm -hmm. this definitely seems like like I, I've wanted to do stuff with Mel, you know. Mm -hmm. And this seems like a good thing to like sit down and play with Mel. Yeah. I'll also mention the game is on a timer, so literally every run oh. is going to take a fairly similar amount of time to beat it. Interesting. Um, I think it'll, I like that. it'll probably take you about three hours to do a run of it. And yeah, then, and if you mess up on a puzzle, it's like you get 15 minutes knocked off your time. Oh, oh you do. Got yeah, it. so um, you really want to so get them right. When you play it again, you sort of know how to do the puzzles and know who to talk to that you can do that right. much quicker. But like the maximum amount of time it's ever going to take you is like three hours probably. Gotcha. As an also, aging gamer, I appreciate that. Also, there is one cameo in that game that I don't think a lot of people understand or even know who it is. It's mm. Tiny Tim, the guy that sings uh, Tiptoe yep. Through the Tulips, yes, tip stuff like that. Through the tulip. But he's in there. And he I is. saw him, I was he like, it's Tiny Tim, oh my uh, god. Dude, what a strange That's cameo. That's, That's amazing. Great. I love yeah. that. So yes, Jasmine, you have charmed me. I will play this game. It's, it's, it's a good game. It's the best game. <laughs> all right, Bryce, what are your uh, indie games right, of the year, man? Right. I got a couple, and then I threw one on the list at the end there that uh, I think we could all probably uh, yes. bring up. Yep, yep, um, definitely. So I'll just talk about the ones that I put on my list. I'm not mentioning Arcade Spirits. I'm in it. It is a conflict of interest. I just want people to know that. All right? I'm in the game. I can't wow. say that. that that's very right? good of you. I mean, you uh, could. You absolutely could. I, I could, think there's but any, uh, I don't think it's fair. I don't think there's any contract <laughs> oh. uh, things there. Can I just add before we move on? Uh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. I, my original best indie game was Sayonara Wild Hearts. Ah. That was on my list as like, this is amazing because the, the soundtracks was incredible. So it's a gameplay. Uh, but <laughs> last night when we were playing uh, games and talking about this, everyone was reminding me of Later Alligator. And I was like, oh, sorry, Sayonara. You You're just like, got bumped off the list. Sayonara, so, Sayonara. Yeah, that's a good game, though. Yeah. So I, I'm sorry. I'm sure it was great, but not good enough to make me get a subscription to um, <laughs> the Apple's Apple uh, gaming platform. It's on which is, Steam, I think. It's on no, Switch. I thought you guys Epic. played it on Switch. Wait, or is it on you... Switch? It's on Switch. That's we played it on I... Switch. Yes. Ah, okay. okay cool. I thought it was exclusive to yeah. Apple. That was yeah. my I'll bad. I'll, I'll pick yeah. it up on my my Switch eventually. Yeah, for sure. I, I've been wanting sure. to play uh, that one. Everybody's been talking about that one. I've been looking Latifa for to play on Switch. Narrates the game, which is kind of incredible. Yeah. Well, that you should have led with that. You, yeah, you just put me on board. <laughs> <You're definitely laughs> right now. I mean, yeah, yeah, just for Queen Latifah, I, I'm uh, hell yeah. <laughs> like we were like blown uh, away when we were reading the credits. All of a sudden, thank you, Queen Latifah, for being the narrator. Like, what? Why are you here? Hell yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so the ones that I did say uh, beyond because yes. I can't say Arcade Spirits, like I said. Uh, so, um, Atomicrops loved it. Had a ton of fun playing Atomicrops. Um, it's the kind of game that I. 
uh, really gravitate towards those kind of like twin stick shootery. It's an Isaac like mm -hmm. roguelite kind of deal. And uh, I continue to wait for them to release the next Isaac to no avail. Um, so Atomic Crops really <laughs> kind of scratched that itch. Rick talked about the setting already earlier. So I'll just say like gameplay wise, it paces itself incredibly well. And that's what makes it so fun. The mm -hmm. um, the time you spend in the morning where you're supposed to be either exploring the world or planting your own crops is a condensed, you know, amount of time. You don't get too long to do all that setup, but you get enough to feel like, well, I got some stuff done. Uh, and then the combat starts and it's like, OK, it's waves of stuff. And then you're in town and then repeat. And so because the pacing is so good, it just pulls you along through your run, whether you die or whether you make it to the end of the year. But um, for me, in a game, like this when the setting's great the characters are great the art's great the music's great having that kind of pacing um really is what keeps me into a game like this for long term because any game that has a lull i kind of can lose interest um so Tom crops awesome game totally worth playing check it out and i think it's only timed exclusive for epic i know it's on epic right now i think yeah, it's it only is. timed exclusive so you should be able probably to get it on everywhere yeah, next year i feel like with exception of some console stuff like some yeah. insomniac games and stuff like that most games on pc yeah. these days are going to be timed yeah. exclusives mm -hmm. yeah um uh, so, so uh, after Atomic Crops, uh, another honorable mention for World Next Door. World Next Door was incredible. Again, like I said, just the, the art style and the setting and everything like that. Um, I really gravitated towards that, loved it, and uh, really, really appreciated it. Um, also, that, um, match, that match gameplay was really fun. Yeah, yeah. That match I, gameplay I, was a lot of fun, yeah. I think taking the match genre and turning it into like a... Uh, a spell fighting uh, mechanic was mm -hmm. really neat and the fact that like it wasn't just about doing the match gameplay but it's also about positioning so it's not just a puzzle game like you do have to think about where you are in the space you do have to like use it strategically like when we played the versus mode that was when you really see kind of like how the gameplay works where you're like oh dodge that move oh dodge mm -hmm. that move oh I got you with that one really fun really fun game so definitely pick up world next door it's a good one Mm -hmm. it it's is. a good. It's a good. All right, and uh, for Rick, me, Rick, Rick, Rick. my favorite indie game, um, and this is with a caveat again because um, it. Honestly, we were on a time crutch coming up with this stuff, all right? We were planning for stop miss and this kind of stuff. We were like, oh, crap, we need to do a year in review. If we had time to actually knock ideas around with each other, I'm sure that we could have uh, come up with the thing that I think we're going to settle on. But my, one of the games that I loved playing was My Friend Pedro. I was really looking forward to this game um, before release. And uh, I didn't realize that this game was like released on sort of like a Newgrounds kind of a site um, like years and years ago. It was kind of like this this indie dev made this like ridiculous kind of flash game and based off of that devolver was like yo let's make it this into a real thing and it was a lot of fun and it's just it's zany the the gunplay was really good i streamed it the day it came out having never played it again and got tons of flack and people were like you're dumb and don't know how to play this game and you were right but the gameplay was fun enough that i went back and wanted to like get the a rating and all the levels you know and so replayed it but um had a lot of fun playing my friend Pedro. Um, with that being said, I think that um, the addition that Price added, uh -huh. um, honestly, bears mentioning. It's a good mentioning. contender. It's a good contender. Honestly, it's. We've this all had a lot of fun with this game. We've all had a lot of yeah, fun with this game. This game should have been, I think, in all of our best co-op games, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> well, um, so so I want to say this. The reason I didn't put it in co-op game, because like as I, I when I put it in there first, I put it in co-op, and then I moved it over here, because I was like, you don't really work together. <laughs> you verse. <laughs> no. It's versus. It is a versus. True, but, but it's multiplayer, and I feel it's like true. That's maybe true. next year I'll update yep. it to best multiplayer game to, mm -hmm. to specify. But um, no time to relax. Yep. Yeah. This is good game. Uh, a game based off of this 90s game called Jones in the Fast Lane. Which we should play again with you, Rick, because you would really we love should. that. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Silly. That, I that feel was like something you guys more, played when I wasn't around. I feel like there's more variability in that one because there's a chance you can lose your job. Yeah. Which is something mm. they haven't added in this version of the game. And in that one, you also don't automatically get a raise. So someone else can get the same job you get and be making more money than you just because of when they got just the job. Just like in real life. Yeah. It's so right? crappy. Jones of the Fast Lane is like way more like, ugh, ugh, gotcha. This game is amazing though. Um, so much fun. We recently played it uh, for Stop Miss after not playing like, 
incredibly for like a year or something ridiculous, mm-hmm. like six it months or something like that. Yeah, it had been it a while. It had been a long time, way longer than we thought, but they had added yeah. so much to the game. And it's a very small indie studio from Iceland. Mm-hmm. And the, dev, the, the devs have been like extremely accommodating. Like mm-hmm. they've... Um, they, they've messaged us and thank you for playing. They even put us in the game. This isn't why I'm talking about it right now with you guys, but they actually did give us a card in the game, and that's always fun. But if you got three fun friends to play with, like, we all know the game of life. That game is mm-hmm. dumb. <laughs> This is the game of life done right. If you want, if you're thinking, "Hey, I've got three friends, we should play life." Screw that. Uninstall it. Go pick up No Time to Relax because it is the superior version of the game of life. Yeah, indeed, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, and that does it for best indie games. Um, mm-hmm. Next up is a interesting category that I think that we unanimously agreed on. <laughs> uh, this oh. is the biggest disappointment category. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to? Yeah. You want to lead us off here, Ash, with this? So I'll mention that all four of us. There's there's not any even caveats about this category. All four of us wrote the exact same thing on this yeah. one. Yeah. 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 Just anthem. We all put <laughs> anthem as our answer for biggest disappointment of 2019. Video game disappointment, anyway. It's just it's so disappointing because. I love the studio, oh. you know, that made it. And I'll, I'll, I'll say this, like, um, Anthem, I think that the, it is genuinely fun for six to ten hours. Like, I, I think that there is yeah. fun to be had with this game, but it's meant to be a game like like Destiny or like... Um, uh, and, and like uh, Division or something like that, where you're, you're meant to be replaying it. And those games... They reuse the same landscape and reuse the same world, but like send you sort of in different different directions to reuse the same landscape. In this game, I just feel like the map was not utilized that well, and so you just sent, kept going to the same locations, and it felt like you were going to the same locations, and it felt very samey very quickly. Um, yeah. And I think that's the ma- major problem, because you can argue that this game is very similar to something like Destiny in the way that you play those quests, but at the end of the day, in something like Destiny, like you, you didn't necessarily feel like I'm going here again. I'm killing these same monsters again. And, and sure, you can still make that argument for Destiny, but I, I feel like it's way worse in Anthem. Um, I did feel that way in Destiny, honestly. And in Anthem, I liked the gameplay of Anthem better than um, Destiny yes. because it felt like you were Iron Man, you know, um, yes. which was fun. And there oh thank you so much to um city Azrael. that's what i'm gonna say for that dollar 50 donation sorry uh just a something little before heading off to my first shift this holiday unfortunately i went back to full-time education this year and i wish i could help more no problem this is definitely something also helps the what's going on in australia absolutely guys um climate change right it's it's worldwide all right mm-hmm. so what affects what happens in one side of the world definitely affects what's happening in the other so it, it's all we're all part of one big ecosystem thank you so much thank you um so yeah, agreed with Ash on Anthem. The the overall like for me, it came down to there was uh, there's a lot of hype behind it. Wanted to play an Iron Man type game, and the stuff that got in the way was ancillary. Like mm-hmm. the just getting into the game is frustrating. Like walking through that town in order to get all your quests and everything like that. It's like I get it. You want it to be immersive, but. I found that so boring and so droll. And it's like, literally, if you just let me be Iron Man in town, you would have fixed that problem immediately. Why did I have to go into this weird first person character mode and walk this fast when this game is advertised to let me fly around like up and over things and be like so empowered? So that slows things down. And then just everything relying on that like Mm -hmm. instance based, you know, multiplayer, like that kind of stuff. It's like, yes, I want to play multiplayer games. It's great. But I also want to be able to do things on my own. And I also don't like it when they really um, kind of withhold like components of a game unless you're willing to spend 40 hours a week raiding. And then they had all the connectivity issues and all the other, you know, the behind the scenes stuff. So it's just like it was a perfect storm of literally everything did not work. Honestly, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, like, 
Oh, go ahead. Uh, I'm just disappointed because Bioware does make good games. You know, they they've do. done yeah. in the past. And they do. I, I feel like it was just disappointing the fact that they were hyping on like two different gameplay. Uh, they had two different genres basically that they mashed into one and I think EA had a big part of pushing them too fast which EA does mm -hmm. a lot and I think that they never really fully developed one genre over the other and it just became like this unfinished product that is just yep. really disappointing. And, yeah. uh, and, yeah, I'll, and I'll, to piggyback I, on that, Jazzy, real quick, just because to, to, of the Bioware comment that you made. Um, Bioware lives and breathes and thrives in a place where they can build this massive lore, mm -hmm. these great characters, like this really in-depth thing. And the structure of Anthem didn't facilitate that, even though the lore and the world and the story that they created was interesting once you started mm -hmm. to see little pieces of it. But they made it so hard to engage in. Well, yep. and I, I was going to mention that actually, like uh, they they were ambitious because there was like this element of like you can play this PVE and there's still this story and lore and this campaign to the game, which was cool. It was weird the way they did it, splitting between third person and first person, but yeah. if you can get past that. They were trying, but what really got me was like they launched the game. It wasn't quite what people were expecting. And rather than them say like, you know, we're going to fix this. They almost just were like, we're done. Like incredibly quickly. They were like, yep, we're done with Anthem. We're not even going to bother trying to update it or fix this stuff. They were late with releasing patches that people were expecting. There were game breaking things. And they were just like, you know what? We screwed up with Anthem and guess what? We're just done with it. We're done with it. I'll Everybody who spent your money on Anthem, we're done. We're, Seriously. We're going to get some uh, some comments here because supposedly like a month ago or something, there was some uh, Bioware interview where they said they're still working on something for Anthem. And it's like, that's, I can understand if you're, so, if you're if you're someone like Hello Games and you're keeping quiet to fix your game for a long time because you've yet to prove yourself as a studio. Um, mm -hmm. And so they, Hello right. Games stay quiet for so long and finally An indie fix studio, their game. like Hello Games, right. If you're EA, you don't stay quiet. You say, no. here's what we're doing and here's, here's the when mess. you can expect yeah. it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, exactly. And, and I would anyway. say that, like, I think that you, you made a very good comparison there. I think that what we, we all were disappointed with No Man's Sky, right? If you go back last year or the year before, we all were disappointed in No Man's Sky. And Anthem is the corporate example. It's the big studio mm -hmm. example of right. No Man's Sky. What did the indie studio that made uh, No Man's Sky do? Right? They spent a lot of time and really tried to fix that game. And you know what? They they, they really tried. And I and think they that what they've made to. yeah. And what they've made now is much better than the product that yeah. first was launched. Kudos to them for doing that when they could have abandoned it. Here they yeah. we'll see what EA does with Anthem, but I feel like we're in in a few more years, we'll be able to look up back on this moment and be like, yep. EA really screwed up Anthem. They had gold that they could have made something out of and they just let it die. And then No Man's Sky, kudos to them for at least trying, you know? The the last thing that I want to say about what irks me most about Anthem is that it is a loot-based game. And I feel yeah. like when you decide to be a loot-based game, a lot of that is cosmetics. People want yes. to see yes. this character grow via progression based on cosmetics. Um, and I'll only really your gun changes, right? Yeah, I mean, like, not even really that. Like, you get that the thing is, you get so much loot in Anthem, but mm -hmm. it doesn't change your character barely at all. Yeah. And sometimes you can upgrade to the point where, like, you can make a small little change to, like, your helmet having, like, an extra wing on it or something. Like, mm -hmm. there needs to be so much more loot yeah. customization in that game. And when it first launched, the only real like the the only real standouts in different looking armor were paid cosmetics and yeah they they really yep. did not go hard on that at all and they you really you have to if you're going to be a loot based game otherwise what's yeah. the point i agree uh, yeah. totally agree yep i mean and yep. i and Especially because we were all looking forward to this one. This 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 was a game that mm -hmm. like I think we were we were all like you know what, we're cautiously optimistic because we've seen what's been happening in the past, you know. But like the gameplay looks good and like if if the devs keep on top of it with the updates and stuff, but like yeah, um, almost immediately it fell apart and it seemed like there was there was no contingency 
from EA or Bioware. Like when things started to go south, they were like caught completely off guard. And yeah, I, I think you're going to lose the community when something like that happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we all picked Anthem, but I was mm -hmm. curious. So I Googled like IGN made an article, eight biggest disappointments in gaming in 2019. So I mean, I cool. can talk about I can talk about some stuff, man. Like I can talk yeah. about the fact that Telltale went under. That was last year. Ooh, that was last year. Yeah. Was it? And yeah, last, that was year, last year. Yeah. We, we talked uh, about these, it last these year. These years it are was on melding our together. Now, right? It's completely yeah. understandable, yeah. Rick. I can't believe it's already been a. Um, hmm. I'll, just throw, yeah, I I'll throw a quick year. one out there because I think people expect me to say it, and also because, like, even though I find enjoyment in it, it is still pretty disappointing. WWE 2K20. Yeah, it's so a glitchy mess. It's fair. That's the number. That's a. Uh, that's the top of the list for IGNs. Um, that's number one. Top. No, it's number eight. And then, oh, okay. so of their, of their eight, that's number eight. Um, Got it. Crackdown three came out this year. That was a huge disappointment. But I don't think many people actually expected it to be good. So I can't understand mm -hmm. how it was a disappointment. But that's on the list. Um, the other one in here that I think is worth mentioning is Blizzard's response to Hong Kong. Oh well, yeah, general. I mean no, for yeah. sure. If we're gonna talk about yeah, like. Uh, the games industry as a whole, yes, I agree. Like it's pretty disappointing, oh, and oh, it shows actually. a lack of uh, shows a lack of awareness of the yeah. the audience and the time we're living in, and what the side of good is. You made so many games about good and evil, and you don't yeah. know which ones the bad guys in that scenario. Yeah. Shut it, Blizzard. You know. I I, I, I mean, yeah. Like I'm just gonna step on a, a, a soapbox here for a second because, yeah. um, like. Love it or hate it, China is doing some terrible stuff, you guys. Um, particularly, like, ethnic cleansing that's happening. Like, there are Uyghur Muslims in yep. uh, China that are being put into concentration camps. I mean, this is stuff, like, straight out of Germany in World War II. And the world is turning a blind eye to it because it's not good for um, corporate, um, um, like, finance sheets, basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just recently, there, like, within the last few days, there is a soccer star, Mesut Ozil, who uh, pointed this out, said, this is happening, genocide. And his club made a statement saying, um, his views are not our views. Uh, we like you, China. Arsenal are popular in China. Uh, yeah, don't worry about him. Uh, regardless, they didn't air that match in China, and um, they, they, they're they not happy with the club Arsenal. But it's true. It's happening. And corporate America is being really shitty about it. Um, yep. I mean, not just corporate America. Politicians too, the UN, for example, which has a strict definition of what genocide is. So, um, with that being said, there was a game called um, Devotion that was an amazing horror game right. brought to you by the devs of a game called Detention, which I played on stream and loved. They're a um, company based out of Taiwan, and they made a joke about Xi Jinping, and then they got hit with... Um, review bombs on steam and then they Ooh. pulled their game and they never released it the game was up for a week and i think it was ign who actually had this in like their top 10 games of the year i was gonna say i heard you can't that play it i heard that it's one of the um the best exclusive games i was looking up at best exclusive games i heard that's one yeah. of the best exclusive games it i really wanted to play it you can't because china bullied them Yep. off of the internet and china has a lot of sway there are a lot of people in china yep. their government is very powerful but they are the government, not the Chinese people. I, I want right. to make that distinction. Right. The Chinese mm -hmm. government are doing very, very bad things. And do not let corporations fool you into thinking, no, it's OK, business as usual. Yep. I, I'm fully with you there, Rick. And so to bring it back to what we're talking about, it's very disappointing to see uh, companies in the games industry, particularly ones that we're generally fond of, um, disappoint us in such a way, right? Like to be yeah. like, oh, okay, yeah, you're just as bad as everyone else is. Cool, that's great, Blizzard, awesome. So I'll say this, for ever since StarCraft, ever since Warcraft 2, I have bought, I think every Blizzard game, I think every one, um, I have spent a ton of money in Overwatch, even though I don't play it anymore. I've still, I probably dropped a couple hundred bucks in there worth of, uh, probably many. Uh, so, and now I'm kind of like, well, you know what? Maybe I won't buy every Blizzard game. Maybe I'm going to be like, all right, I'll buy the ones I really want. Maybe, but we'll see. I have lost my love of the brand. So yeah. that's yeah. what, that's what happens. Yeah. I mean, like when, when, a, when a 
Studio is small enough that they don't really care about the impact of statements like that on their bottom line because they have a diehard group of gamers that like support them, then they can get away with like saying controversial things. But yeah, when when all of a sudden you tap into this market of, you know, like 500 million gamers in China, then it's like all of a sudden, yeah, it's um, yep. it becomes a lot harder for them to to do what's right. Yep. Um, do, 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 do. So that's anyway. disappointments. Yeah. That's disappointments, guys. Uh, and wait, uh, yeah, I see, I see Price actually replying to somebody. So, uh, someone in chat said, 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 yeah, said something to like, oh well, you know, it's political now or blah blah blah. It's like, look, literally, all of life is political. Look, if you don't think life is, is. political, yeah. you have you literally walk outside. Is there a sidewalk? Yeah. Politics. You know, like well, literally, your entire world uh, is yeah. political. I, I don't want to keep this going too yeah. long, and I definitely don't want to diverge too much. But we're talking oh, no. about China. We're talking about gaming, and sure, there are politics involved in China, and somebody said, I hope this doesn't get political. And I, I guess that's referencing we haven't yet, which is good, but when we're talking about the human rights of people, yeah. this is not a conversation about politics. This no. is a conversation about human rights, that's true. okay? That's true, that's true. People's human rights are being violated. This is not a politics thing like, what should we do with the tax revenue we raise? Should yep. we tax people? Yep. Yep. Sure. People are dying, all right? Yep. This is not political. I'd also like to just mention that we're kind of doing a similar thing at our border. Okay, let's uh, move on to the next one, huh? All right, game of the year, everybody. Um, this is a big one. Ash, Yo. start us off. I think I gotta give my game of the year to Plague Tale, man. I do. This boy loves it, rats. It took. It, took <laughs> it just took me. By surprise, so much more than any other game this year. Um, yeah, I, I, and it really wraps up its entire rap package very well. Like uh, <laughs> the entire story is super charming. Um, I was not upset by the ending whatsoever, and oh, it's it's, right. it's it's great. You know, I'm usually very judgmental and nitpicky with endings saying I'd rather it be done this way or this that way just because I'm a very nitpicky person but it was it was great it was just a solid all around game mm -hmm. I start agree. calling you king of the rats all right you you explained it a lot in your last uh... I did so yep so, I, don't, I don't have a lot else to say other than like Dale there's rat to tornadoes so go rat <laughs> tornadoes the game is Ash's pick all right uh Jasmine you've got a cup no, I'm sorry. I was looking at Game of the Decade, which is no. spoilers. One of the things that'll, coming up. That'll, that'll Your game bad. of the year is Dragon Quest Builders 2. Yes. I have Solace. never had so much fun with a game than Dragon Quest Builders 2 because it's wow. It's uh, well, I mean, I love a lot of games. This is definitely the one sure. that I put the most time and energy into. I think I actually put in like 50, 60 hours into it this year, and. Uh, it's an incredible game. It is basically Minecraft in the Dragon Quest world. I have never really been a huge fan of the Dragon Quest world or Dragon Quest because I've never had the opportunity to play a lot of them. Uh, and I'm, I definitely want to now because this game introduced me into it. But it's, it's definitely a very good story, mm -hmm. but with a Minecraft aspect that you need to build things for people. And it's also like a town builder at the same time because yeah. you're meeting the needs of the people that are around you. And you're also making it aesthetically pleasing to yourself. And mm -hmm. it's just really interesting to have like uh, every time you move into a different area, there's like the same thing. You have to do the same thing over and over again, but they have different needs. Mm -hmm. And you're also expanding on the stuff that you've learned before. And so yep. it's just really, really fun. And then, of course, the story is just adorable and it's cute. And it was like epic. It felt epic because it was epic. Yeah. Um, it, curious it, why, um, like, maybe... Um, because you didn't play any of the other games, but I, I saw that you included Risk of Rain 2 as your favorite sequel, but why not uh, Dragon Quest Builders because 2? Because I didn't, didn't play the play first one. one. Yeah, I didn't play the first Fair one. Enough. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. Uh, I, the games I picked this year are the games I personally played this year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for sure. And yeah, I, I mean, think this I th game I think was... that we've all done that, but mm -hmm. I think that that's, yeah, I mean, that's interesting to just know that, like, if you don't play the first one, you're not going to even talk about the second one. Cause, I would say... Because, I mean, like, there's nothing to base it off of, right? Right. Uh, yeah, and it's true. And I will say that a lot of people have mentioned to me, and I've also taken it from my friend Kakajo, who has said that this is a very good sequel to the first one because... It fixes a lot of the problems that people um, recognize in the first one and improved upon it. So it would be a good sequel if I had played the first mm. one. And I'll yeah. say, as 
I, I've played it as well. Like, I, I enjoyed this game a lot, and I would say, uh, Rick, the, what might also maybe entice you to go and play it is that the city building stuff that Jazzy was talking about mm -hmm. reminds me a lot of, like, RimWorld in terms yeah. of you're building the houses, and or, like, you're building a square in a certain size, and then once you put enough, like, a certain furniture in there, brr, now it's a kitchen. Or, yeah. brr, now it's a workshop. And, and then the people know how to use it in that way, people so you get to build a city. Actually, yeah. See, that, that, yeah. And that is totally enticing. And it yep. is out on Steam now, and it's been on my radar, and I've been considering it. Yeah, it's real fun. Yeah, it's real fun. It's really I'll fun. And like, as, go ahead. Go ahead, Ash. As someone that uh, has only played about thirty minutes of this game, I want to play this game. But as someone that is old and is his eyes are getting terrible, <laughs> this game has the smallest font. It does. Of it really any does. Any game I've played yes. in many many years. So I, I'm hoping that there's some workshop stuff now well, that's on Steam. So yeah, maybe that'll, that'll be PC. fixed. Yeah, um, it's mostly because when you play it on the Switch, yeah, the screen is so small, and literally the well, biggest size text is still super tiny. We yeah. we played it on PS4 Pro, so ah. I'm not sure if it's like a 4K thing or something. But it's like, good God. I can't, Which is so funny. I can't read it at all. Uh, I'll because say, that was a that was a complaint that um, games had when they first went 1080p, when like high def was first the thing, mm -hmm. is like that that upscaling like font was too small. So this is a problem that has been addressed for the last and, decade and should and not I, be a problem anymore. And I'll say this: the reason that this even continues to be an issue, in in my opinion, is because when people are developing UI stuff, they're developing it like you know using existing stuff. They're not thinking about the end user. And it's like, no, 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 no. Look, I know it looks really nice and clean when your font is that small because your resolution can handle it and it's still readable. But when you're actually yeah. playing the game, I need big letters. I need it to be big and bold because you know what else I'm doing? I'm running from that banshee and I also got to build these things while I'm going. I can't be reading oh, oh, Malroth uh, just well, gained yeah. a level. <laughs> you know, like and come we're on. talking about we're talking about the decade in gaming and a huge part about the last decade has been accessibility in gaming, mm -hmm. right? So like when that is such a focus and it's awesome that more games have been so much more accessible for so many people but that's like basic guys that's like like games are including like like colorblind mode now and you mm. gotta make font option make it bigger that yes. is something that star wars fallen order has added mm. and we were me and me and ash saw that option we're like hell yeah let's do it <laughs> increase the font size of the subtitles it was so yeah. nice, nice. Uh, yeah, going back to this game the yep. just the like free build mode is so satisfying because you go to these different worlds these little different islands and in those islands you do stuff specifically for those people and then once you finish the island you learn a bunch of new recipes that you can take back to your uh free build island which you could do whatever the hell you want with mm -hmm. it it's incredible they're like they'll sort of like want a theme for the area but to, like that's it it's just a theme mm -hmm. you don't have to do that stuff you could build whatever you want it's in, it's just very satisfying to build like a little town that works and they all are self-sufficient and stuff like that so and yeah. that reminds me of something mm -hmm. another reason Rick you need to play this the second setting like the second like thing that you go and do it's essentially Vegas casino like essentially oh what they want you to do okay. is build a, like a little right. Vegas yeah yeah you know what like seriously I've been thinking about picking up this game I might have to pick it up and maybe I'll play it like tomorrow it's great it's on really stream, great. All right. But is it worth 60 bucks? I think it is, Ben. I think it is, I, Benjamin. I, yeah. I paid it. Yeah, I, yeah. Like, honestly, I saw Jazzy having so much fun with it. So when I was on a, I had a train trip that mm -hmm. I needed to take up to Seattle. So I was like, I'm going to be in the train for three hours and three hours back. And I was like, I'll pick up this Dragon Quest. And I played it the whole time. I was, I loved, Enzo, it. I loved it. Thank you so much for that $25 donation. You're going on the tree. I have wanted to participate in a charity stream for so long. And now I can. Thank you so much for an uh, enjoyable gameplay and always bringing engaging conversation to topics. You all are superb. Thank you, thank Enzo. You. Thank you, Enzo. Thank you, Enzo. That means a lot, honestly. Thank you so much. Um, you're Yo. going on the tree, Enzo. We're sitting you know at twenty-seven thousand four hundred fifty-six dollars and forty-three cents. Ooh. Thank you so you're much. You're going right at the Ooh. top. If I can loop it, there we go. I think we're top, Enzo. I think there we hit twenty-seven five pretty quick, huh? Hmm? Huh? I uh -huh. think so. Let's do it before the end of this this uh, block, guys. Ash yeah. is going to be finishing off uh, the night, but we've got a mm. little bit more time left. All right, guys. Uh, game of the year: Dragon Quest Builder Two from Jazz. What do you got, Price? Uh, this can be short and sweet. Link's Awakening. Um, I'm a huge fan of Link's Awakening. It was probably the Zelda game I played the most as a kid, and this year they released the remake, and 
man, man, oh man, it was perfect. It was just gorgeous. I loved every minute of it. It's It's been a while since I've had a game that like, it's one of those ones where like, I'm playing it before I go to sleep. And then, you know, it's like, okay, I gotta go to bed. So I put it, put my switch away and like, I wake up and first thing in the morning, I'm like, oh, I just want to play a little bit more, you know? Um, it's just this nice combination of both like nostalgia while also they did so much to improve on it and make it enjoyable and make it modern mm -hmm. that like if if Nintendo is using this as a test to remake all of the old Zelda games, please, 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 yeah. please, please, please do. I would, please, yeah, please, I would please, 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 please do. I would love to play an update to Link to the Past. Are you kidding yes. me? That was like my favorite. So oh right. my gosh. That's my favorite. Yeah. And so, as someone who didn't like Breath of the Wild, this was really refreshing. It is. Mm, yeah. This is the yeah. most core yeah. Zelda experience, you know. Like yeah. it just this is what I want. This is what I want. So yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Link's Awakening. If you haven't checked it out and you have a Switch, do get it at some point. It is incredible. Yeah. Thank you for those uh, biddies there, Richard. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, <gasps> all right, and oh, can you tell me? I love an update of Season of the Ages. That was my favorite what? one. What Zelda. What, what? Oh, oh okay. Zelda yeah. season yeah. of the ages. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was a really good one. All right, um, I I'm gonna cheat here, guys. Um, He's a cheater. But Rick's a cheater. I I'm going to explain my way out of this. All right, my favorite game of the year was Civilization VI: Gathering Storm. But Rick, right? that game did not come out this year. That game came out the other year. It did, uh, but <laughs> Gathering Storm came out this year, which is the DLC which completed the game, all right? And I would argue that Civilization VI was not completed until this final DLC. Rick, <clears throat> you can make that argument about every Civ game. No Civ and game that is, is complete. Why, <laughs> and that is why I'm making this, because every Civ game is complete after its final DLC. And Civ I w what I will say is that Civilization VI before the DLCs was a really good sequel to Civilization V. I think Civilization V perfected the Civilization games. But Gathering Storm really made Civilization VI so much different and so much more fun to play. It honestly, for the first time in a long time, it really felt like you were playing a different game. It added a lot of nuance and a, a lot of new uh, uh, game mechanics. Um, to the point that when Civilization VI first launched, I played it a lot, and then I put it on the shelf, and then I didn't touch it for a year, and I've been playing it more than ever now that Gathering Storms come out. Um, so, honestly, it's um, it's the game that I've been playing the most this year, and yeah, uh, it's definitely my game of the year, Gathering Storm. I'm, I'm no, gonna have no to doubt. pick that up because I haven't played it yet, but I will say I think that the because the added mechanics right is like one of the oh. big ones is the uh, those world events. Uh, like volcanoes mm -hmm. and stuff, right? And then also like the global warming, right? Like the, or like mm -hmm. the sea levels rising so, and things like that, right? Yeah, the, the, like climate change um, is a huge part of it. So, oh my goodness. Thank you, Elena, so much. You've been donating a lot. $1.26. This donation is in honor of all the awesome mods. Thank you. Thank show you, some, Elena. Show some support. Thank you so much. Our mods are amazing. Thank you so much for that. Um, Climate change is a big part. Late game, uh, sea levels do rise, and you actually contribute. You can actually see how much CO2 you're contributing, you know? Oh. Um, there are, like, things that um, get passed in, like, the World Congress Policies, that yeah. limit the, the certain, like, um, uh, power Industries. that you can produce. So, like, yeah, like, you can't produce coal or whatever. Uh, but, like, right out the gate, um, like, volcanoes, um, mm. riverbeds, you know, like, there are floodplains, which will flood and destroy your cities, but they will create more fertile lands for you. So this uh, risk reward kind of thing going on, you know, um, it's a ton of fun. Yeah. So uh, uh, I, dig that. I didn't even, I didn't even think about that, but that's like so perfect for like early civilization mm -hmm. to be like, hey, we found it next to a river and oh, my gosh, everything flooded. Yeah. But then our culture builds around that experience. That's neat. That's and neat. I mean, not even to mention, like there's uh, there's eras now. So there's era scores, you know, you right. uh, accumulate era points in different ways and you can either fall into a dark age or a golden age, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, great game, great game. Cool, cool. So, so Ralph, I like it. I, I'm, I'm curious to get your take then on... Uh, it, I noticed that we, we have a topic that we're bringing up, and I noticed it's not on your list. Are you excited for the game Humankind? Um, yes, so I human, am, you know? Humankind Honestly, made by the developers that did Dungeon of the Endless and all those Endless games. It looks like their take on a very traditional civilization game. It looks and I'll good. be real, like now that you mentioned it, like that should have been on my list, and I'll tell you mm -hmm. why it's not. Because they haven't been doing a good job hyping it. I heard about uh, it in D three. 
They and just awards. released a new gameplay trailer yeah. at the new game game awards. So you oh, there you go. Okay. Oh, cool. Right. Oh boy. Yeah, so, I mean, like it, kinda, it fell off my radar, honestly, and that's why. You know, mm -hmm. like I remember being hyped when the E3 came out. Um, and I mean, credit to CG Project Red for just keeping um, spoilers cyberpunk in our brains so well. Mm -hmm. For better um, or worse. All right. So next up, we've got. Game of the decade. It's a big one. Of the decade. That's a it big is one. A, is, so we are moving into the new decade. So we would be remiss if we didn't include some mm -hmm. decade-defining things in this uh, this uh, uh, year in review. So we've got Ash up first. What do we got? So I listed a few. I'll talk about them pretty quickly. But um, okay. I think my, my number one choice has to be Minecraft. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll say right at the start of this thing, there's going to be people that say it, it doesn't come out. It didn't come out this decade. It came out in 2009. And I would argue to you, first of all, it didn't hit 1.0 until 2011. Second of yep. all, none of the... If you tried to play Minecraft in 2009, it was barely was a nothing. game. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was it was creative mode, and it was not even much creative mode. It was. It was like, It didn't even have yeah. multiplayer until 2010. It was like true early. It was. It was literally an alpha. They called it an alpha. Anyway, Hon um, honestly, young Minecraft fans, you can go ahead and OK Boomer us right now. But we literally played it. This, the three of us, Ash, Jazz, and I, played the original alpha of Minecraft. Like we have the original alpha <gasps> codes, which were. Legendary. Oh. You know? Can I tell a story? Because I think it's relevant to this. Okay. Our friend yeah. Dunk, uh, not Dunk, the, the mod, our, mm. our friend, our personal yes. friend Duncan, yes. tricked oh. yes. okay. me and Ash to think that the game was procedurally updating. I don't know if you guys remember this, but we had a oh, friend yeah, yeah. server he where he server was where constantly like, adding little like, tiny details to it. And he's like, the game ages over time. So certain blocks just turn mossy. He and, and his brother I are top tier I literally thought trolls. that was true. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> because we didn't um, know that the game was so new to us. We didn't know. Yeah. So I, uh, we can. I, I, I have, I have opinions about whether or not you should could should consider an early access game the year of release or the final version of year of release. And there's certainly newer games where I would make the argument like Risk of Rain. It's not 1.0 yet, but hell right. if it isn't like very close to final right, right. now. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, Minecraft came out this decade. It's true form this decade anyway. And mm -hmm. I would find it very hard to argue that there's any other game that had a bigger impact on this decade than Minecraft. Um, yeah, it really set the stage for voxel games for creative survivally building games um it did so much for so many games that i really think that it it really is on its own for having mm -hmm. the biggest impact mm -hmm. of this decade mm -hmm. another game that I, I have to give uh, a quick mention to is binding of isaac um i know i probably didn't play it nearly as much as you price or even jasmine uh, probably but you know i got a couple uh, hundred hours in now <laughs> i think uh i think that it certainly inspired and influenced quite a lot of other games that I did play this decade a lot more than it. Um, just the entire roguelike genre, I think, owes quite a lot of credit to Binding of Isaac. Um, and oh, so, yeah. For sure. Yeah, Undoubtedly. That that game yep. really, uh, it still, in my opinion, it's, is probably the best roguelike, but there's so many other great games. Um, I mean, hell, I, I loved... Um, and I'm blanking on it, which Spelunky? makes me very, very not Spel I mean, Spelunky's great. Um, Rogue Legacy. Rogue Legacy is ah, so oh, yeah. yes. freaking mm -hmm. good. I think it owes a lot of credit to Bion Isaac as well. And I, anyway, I would say, um, if you want to play it, play Rebirth. The original is still Flash-based. It still has some issues, but Rebirth, yeah. that's yeah. the better yeah. one. Yeah, I, I agree with Ash. I think Binding of Isaac, it, like, to use a pun, it did birth the genre of roguelites that Ugh. so many people have definitely tried to emulate, and it is very influential. Just like Minecraft yeah, is very like, influential. Yeah, mo modern roguelites would not be a thing if it, it wasn't for, for those Binding of yeah. Isaac. Sure, yeah. they existed before it, did, but, but they they really they weren't popularized. They were popularized. popularized. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, and then this is a fairly obscure game that I want to give a quick nod to for, I guess, more personally to me, is the game 80 Days. Um, it makes my list for Game of the Decade as well. Just more because it is an extremely, I'd say, unique branching story path game. And there's been a lot of choose your own adventure games before this and, and some after, but I'd say there's been none that are as good after. Like there's, this game is so good at being a branching story path game and having like a unique and complete story. And there's been none that have done it nearly as good since. Um, so 
I would love to see more games like 80 Days. I think it really stands out on its own as its own thing. Yeah. That is extremely good and well done. Um, I think people should check it out on mobile. It plays very well on mobile. It's also out on Steam. Um, but if you've never played it, you should definitely definitely check it out. I actually reinstalled it on my phone yesterday when we were, because we got to the doctor's office novel. really early, and so I was like, I need a time killer, and yeah, it's it's a ton of fun. It's it's yeah. a it's a lot of fun. Um, Jasmine, you've got a few to choose from uh, as well. I have to say, I agree 100% with Ash. Minecraft is definitely the game of the decade. Uh, there's so many games that basically have been inspired by it that they've made their own you know versions of the game and it's definitely a, a game that we constantly go back to because it is legitimately a fun game i can't <coughs> play it vanilla i like mods but it's definitely something that if you could wrap one game for this decade minecraft would be it mm -hmm. um i also put a couple others mass effect 2 I put as game of the decade because that was definitely a very influential game to me because I've always enjoyed Bioware stuff. That definitely sealed it for me with Bioware 2 because or with Mass Effect 2 because that game had so many features. It was a shooter, it was a romance, it was uh, an RPG. There was just so many things to that game that just was incredible and uh, it definitely mm -hmm. inspired, you know, it definitely, you know, left a big impression on me. And then a more recent game was Divinity 2, uh, Original Sin. I absolutely love turn-based games, and that game was such a callback to me uh, of like the old games like um, Baldur's, Baldur's Gate. Yeah, you know, uh, Icewind Dale, all that kind of stuff. I love playing those games, and this one was like that on crack. <laughs> That's as much <laughs> as I can do because the game has so many interesting um, features and like, even like the environment you could use to your advantage. And it was, it had, the combat was incredible. It had such an epic storyline and you get really invested in all these uh, characters that they have for you. I mean, you could play each one of the characters and they each have a very unique storyline, but you can also create your own character and meet these ones in the, in the game. But um, I've played this game twice and I'm probably gonna play it again because I wanna know yeah. more about all the other characters and their personal storylines because it's Definitely, just like, such a good game. And I'm so sad. Yeah. I am so incredibly heartbroken that the um, the uh, the spinoff game that was supposed to come out with Vinny 2, I can't remember what it's called now, they basically put the game on hold. And Aww. it's really infuriating because me and Ash at PAX actually had some hands on time with the game. And we're like, this is great. It's just combat focus and that's all we wanted from it and now it's on indefinite hold, but it does give me hope that Baldur's Gate 3 is being made by uh, the studio, so yeah, I'm really yeah. excited for when that eventually uh, starts. Lariat, yeah, right? Larian. Ooh. When they start eventually putting uh, out content. That I'm Baldur's so excited. Trailer. Ooh. I, I, I know <laughs> yeah. you played with Ash all the way through. You and I played quite a bit on stream as well. I yeah. loved the game, and honestly, this is one of those games which, like going back to Satisfactory and saying, like, man, I wish mm. people enjoyed watching it more. Like, mm. it's mm. four player. I would love to play this, all four of us. This is something we could definitely do doing stunt miss. It's not something that we can necessarily put in the channel. People don't really seem to take to it as much as we would like, but man oh man, would I love nothing more than to role play with you guys in the Divinity world. It would be so much fun. And, and Rick, I think yeah. you just pointed out what I would say is probably the best thing about Divinity, because I have yet to play Divinity 2, but Jazzy and I played some Divinity 1, and I really enjoyed mm -hmm. that. Uh, and um, the thing about it that struck me was that like you say, there's so much of the world and there's so much lore. For mm -hmm. me, it's it's one of the games that has come closest to capturing like an actual tabletop gaming experience. And yes. there are so many different avenues and ways that you can do things. If you see a barrel and you have the ability to pick it up and throw it on somebody or drop it on mm -hmm. their head, you can do that, right? You can talk yeah. your way out of a lot of problems if your skills are high enough. But I think the thing that to me really like blew my mind when you explained it to me is... Uh, that you can get the ability to talk to animals and then suddenly yes. you just opened up the game to such a huge amount of other content just because you can literally like, yeah. oh, there's a cat. I want to talk to that cat. There's a rat. I want to talk to that rat. And like they'll have quests and things like the cat that's like, I want to know if my boyfriend's sneaking out on me and stuff yeah. like that. You're like, what? I'm in a cat uh, romance game now? <laughs> well, uh, Ash, I, or actually, sorry, Price, um, like you talk about the closest thing to an actual like tabletop thing. There is actually a Game Master mode in Divinity mm -hmm. 2. There is. Which 
like we'll let the game master queue up dozens of single screen levels to be used over the course of the campaign and you can even upload your own unique world map so like yes you can actually play like essentially dungeons and dragons in this game yes, it is can. incredible i yeah. believe it's rock paper shotgun actually sort of showed off them doing that so if you yeah. want to see yeah. how it's done they did a custom campaign of it. Guys, we might and, have uh, to uh, do this. Yeah. <laughs> also, just to put it out there, Larian keeps updating this game, yeah. which is incredible yeah. to me. Uh, um, so what they've also done is they've actually uh, recognized that their third story act was sort of like weak compared to the rest of the game. So what they did is for a free update to anybody that owns it, they basically expanded the story even further. So if you were like, if you had played the game and thought the third act was sort of, sh you know, short, they're like, mm -hmm. okay, well, you, you can replay the game again. And now the third act has a massive story. We fixed a lot of the storylines uh, for some of the other characters. We tweaked it a bit. And now we probably added another 20 hours to the game. Also, they included a new character that is basically a squirrel that, <laughs> no, it's a, it's a squirrel that rides on a cat and it believes that yeah. there's a great acre and that's coming and that yeah. kind of hangs out with you for the rest of the game. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. it's, <laughs> it's great. So cool. It's amazing. He's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I love it. It's so good. Oh, Sir man. Loris. And he's so good and he's so dismissive. He's so dismissive of you. Like he thinks mm -hmm. that you're just some big oaf that's not going to help him. Yep. And yep. eventually you sort of earn his trust and he's like, okay, I'll teach you something. Maybe you but might help But he's kind of just like, Oh, yeah. you big oaf, you're actually good yeah. for something. You know? And the Even cat you is a like... skeleton that he rides. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. And he's constantly yeah. talking to the skeleton cat. Uh, all right, so Price, what are your Yo. games of the decade? All right, so um, I got one that has been mentioned before, so I will just briefly go over it. Um, Mass Effect 2, Jazzy mentioned it earlier. Um, I similarly love Mass Effect 2. The Mass Effect series is great, and I think Mass Effect 2 is the best game in the series. Um, and What's I think going it is. What's hair? I think it is because whose hair? My hair. It's no. golden and glorious. <laughs> in the picture uh, that Rick found, her hair is just all over the place. It's oh, true, you, you don't, don't all see her that. hair like that in the game. <laughs> it She's never got is. hoops going on in her hair there. Yeah, I'm she sorry. No I didn't idea. mean to interrupt you. Right. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Exactly. I was no, just no, really no. distracting it, you from me. It, it looks like that head is photoshopped on, so I have yes. no idea. Yes. <laughs> It's actually just a picture of Yvonne Strovsky. They just threw her in there. Um, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, so Mass Effect. What, what I love about it is uh, it's the characters and it's the the story. The story has such like the thrust behind the plot, the narrative that drives you forward. It has urgency. It has drama. It has goals. Like every single place you go, every single thing you do is both for whatever the current goal is, but also working towards the final goal. Um, this you know suicide mission, which is the end of the game um and uh so you're just building this crew right but you, it also has you dealing with some really major emotional things because you play mm. as a character from the first game who spoilers for old 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 games uh who dies and then is brought back a year later and so it's mm -hmm. like your friends you're gonna run into people you know they thought you're dead and now here you are right they saw you die they were on the ship with you when you died and then mm -hmm. now here you are but you've been resurrected by this organization that they're kind of against so like they hate you and they love you and there's so much like drama in there yeah and then all the great characters like jack is such a great character and has so much depth fane is such a great character has so much depth. kasumi is yeah. a great character they all are great characters Mm -hmm. I love that game. I love the characters. I love the story. I love everything about it. Everyone should play it. And gameplay wise, it fixed so many of the problems of the first one. Mass Effect right. was clunky. It had issues. Like if you go play the first Mass it's Effect true. or yep. if you go play the first Dragon Age, both of those games, you could tell they didn't quite know what they were going to do with those series. Mass Effect 2, they got it. They figured it oh, out. Yeah. This is a shooter with RPG elements, but we want you to feel like you've got the power, right? Yeah. And 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 it's just, it's so incredible. It's so incredible. If you've but, never played but, it, because I know a lot of y'all are, are younger, maybe you've never gotten a chance to, check out Mass Effect 2. What I you love should, about the game is... In my opinion, you don't need to play the first one. No. You don't need to play the third one no. either. It's a it's yeah. its own complete package, yeah. and you yeah. should play it. It is just a great RPG all in its own. But what I love about this game is it's one of the few games where you con you constantly play the same character because you can upload mm -hmm. your character from the previous games. And you have that feeling of like attachment to that character because yes. you're going from one game to the next game to the next game. And everything slowly, based on your decisions, 
that's how the gameplay continues. And that's just, for me, that's really like satisfying to have like this mm-hmm. closure, especially with the third game. It's just like seeing these characters that you fall in love with sort of have like their ending, their moment, you know, their, their own storyline finishing up. And it's just really nice. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, shout out to my boy Legion. Uh, what a great character. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he, that was a he's DLC a, character, I think. He's, no, no, you know, he's, he's central. Is he in the third one? Uh, uh, yeah, Legion is central. Um, no, the DLC character was Kasumi, and uh, there was a Zaid was also a, 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 a DLC character. But Legion, mm-hmm. um, he's a Geth, which in the first game are just bad guys, and Geth right. have like a hive mind. Legion is something that has a hive mind that has been separated from the hive mind, and so has now is now becoming self aware and and singular and separate, and it's it's. The philosophical things that they can tack, uh, tackle in these games while also dealing with real life problems, it's its gorgeous. Anyway, I've spent enough time talking about Mass Effect 2. Let's switch on over to my next one. Oh, hold on, wait, let me, I, oh, I go ahead. figure it, you don't, you don't breathe when you talk. Uh, Saffron <laughs> Bat don't. donated $3 and said three to the trees and a huge thank you to you guys for being amazing people and kickstarting such a wonderful community. Mary Stummis, mm-hmm. thank you so much. Thank you All so right, much. Now, Rick, I used to teach, and so I learned that I got a lot to get through. So if you speak real fast, sure. then they're going to get through it all. But if you don't speak fast enough, the lesson plan don't get finished. And your students were like, nope. I'm not even going to bother trying to take notes. Oh, no, Just it was great. Some of, them, some of them, they would record me, and they're like, all right, I'm, pay- I'm playing you back on half speed, bro. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. So uh, the next one is Slime Rancher. And the reason that I put Slime Rancher on there is because it is a game that I have played through so, 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 so many times, and I still love it every single time. It is adorable. It uh, is a wholesome game. It is a cozy game. It has a gameplay style that is just so unique. Um, and and I always find something new in there. Additionally, the they continue to develop this game year over year, adding new content, adding new stuff, all for free. They have not charged. Uh, they only just charged for a DLC, and it was a, co- a cosmetic one entirely. Every other update has been um, free. Uh, and additionally... The studio that runs it, Monomi Park, is an incredibly well-run studio. They have incredibly ethical uh, ways that they run that studio. And it's the kind of studio that if you want to get into the games industry, go try and work for them. Or try and figure out uh, studios that they like that they would uh, uh, send you to or something like that because those are the people you want to work for. So it's not just about the game in this instance, even though the game is incredible, but it's also about the people behind the game. Um, I think they're incredible and I think that more of the games industry needs to be like them. Thank you. Um, and thank you, and uh, Waruto, for those uh, little bitties, guys. Drop some bears. So, yeah. All I right. played tons of this. Y'all have seen me play it a bunch. You know, I love this game. Uh, He's the Slime Rancher guy. Yes. So, mm-hmm. then lastly. And then Rick has another one that is one that I would agree with, but he's going to talk about that and I don't need to talk so much. But one that I do think is important to mention is Red Dead Redemption. Both of them, the series, came out this decade. And um, just, I'm from Texas, you know. I grew up idolizing cowboys and having that be a whole kind of my thing. Uh, The Southwest is a part of the world that I am just drawn to because it's it's kind of homey. And so getting to have that sort of Grand Theft Auto style gameplay, but in the Wild West, and, and, and getting to explore these spaces and just the, the emergent stories that occur because I'm the type of player who I like to go off the beaten path and just go start doing stuff. And then it's like, oh, I was out there trying to hunt something. And then out of nowhere, I saw some, you know, clan members in the woods. And then we started getting into a shootout. And then I stole somebody's carriage. And now, you know, I'm on the run from the law. It is like you can hear the Texas coming out in my voice. I just can't help it. It's incredible. So everybody, yourself, should play, everybody should play the Red Dead games. They are wonderful. And uh, yeah, just uh, I think that anyone who's ever played them and how they always end up on Game of the Year lists, you know they're high quality games. You know people love them. And, and I think everyone knows that these are games that are, are cherished by many, many, many. So yeah, Red Dead. I and also like list. worth mentioning, um, like I can't even remember, I'm trying to remember the name of it. I mean, Red Dead Redemption was a follow-up to Red Dead Revolver. Revolver. That was the name yeah. of it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Which was Rockstar's first attempt at making this game, which was mediocre at best. And they could have just abandoned their attempts, but I don't know if it was the tech catching up to their ambition or what it was exactly that they said, you know what, let's try this again. But 
God dang it. Thank goodness they did. Because Thank goodness they otherwise, did. Otherwise, like if they just gave up on Red Dead Revolver and they were like, well, we tried. People didn't take to it. Man, yeah, because I, I agreed. Like, this is this is going to be their new GTA, all right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. GTA 6, when it comes out, of course, it's going to sell big numbers, but this is going to compete with it. Yeah, I, I would even put it this way. It's like GTA is kind of like the, it's the thing you expect that they need to make because it's the base product, but Red Dead is like the, you know, premium product. It's the, it's the it, quality I was gonna, product. I was going to say premium. Yeah. It's, like, that's totally it, man. Yeah. It's like GTA is like the base model and... Yeah. Yeah, this is the one that you wait for. GTA is a blockbuster. This is an Oscar winner. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) Oh, there it is. Uh, All right. So now I guess it's my turn. Uh, My game of the year is... um, Hold on. I got to pull it up. Pull it up. There it is. No, that's not it. No, hold on. <laughs> you can do it. I, I've got a lot of buttons going on here. Sorry, yeah, you guys. Yeah, do. Uh, <laughs> well, which buttons? Sweet are buttons. Oh, what if you bobble it? Uh, Try bobbling this it. This is what happens. With, there we go. That's the one I want. My game of the year is, or my or game, game of the decade, excuse me, is uh, Skyrim. Um, when Good call. Before I was like gaming all the time for Stumped and whatnot, this game came out in 2011, so perfect timing for the decade. Uh, God, 2011? Not only, I know, did right? this one Dang. like just capture right 11 11 11 remember not only yeah. did this capture my attention and like suck up so much of my time but for the first time being a gamer all my life normal people started talking about yeah. skyrim like the 40 year old dad at work was like i'm playing skyrim and i'm like are you kidding me i play I skyrim let's talk about skyrim like i was connecting with people who i never would have connected with mm-hmm. at like it, it, it normalized gaming and over the last decade gaming has become prevalent like everybody games uh, yeah, like whether you want to argue over what's really gaming is mobile game or really gaming mm-hmm. my father-in-law when he comes over for the holidays he's on his phone gaming you know and Skyrim was that gateway game but in addition to that I mean, not only has it released on every platform to the point that it's a joke that it's on Alexa but it is but it is and it's still getting ports. When the Switch came out, mm-hmm. Skyrim got a Skyrim port. You know, like it's still popular. The modding mm-hmm. community has kept it fresh. And to this day, I've never beat it. Huh? Yeah, I, but I can say the same thing. Hours into it. I can say the same thing. I am a completionist. That dragon? I do Come every on. other quest before I do the main quest. And I right. still haven't beat it. Yeah. And if you look at it through today's lens, if I go back and play Skyrim... I agree. Like it's samey. You go into the dungeon. The su- the dungeons mm-hmm. seem repetitive, but in 2011 it was revolutionary, and it's still a good game even by any standards. You know, it's hard to compare it because games have taken and built on what Skyrim mm-hmm. has given us and made it better. But this was the first game where it's just like it. It felt so open like the map was so big like when people talk open world skyrim did it before anybody like Mm -hmm. sure Mm -hmm. minecraft was open world too but that's just like it's it's not pre-constructed open world you know what i mean like i mean this was a gigantic map and you really felt like you were discovering something new when you walked from one end to the other I would say like Morrowind, I think was really yeah. the first thing for me. Like, of course, it's the same company, right? But Morrowind was definitely that entryway into like that type of uh, game setting, um, because it was exactly like Skyrim. You can go anywhere you want, and I did do the stupid thing where I was just exploring the world and I wandered into a Daedric shrine when I was level one. I was like, <laughs> I can't believe there's monsters this high level around here. Um, oh yeah. Like but yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't want to. I, yeah. I don't want to say like it was the first to do it. But when I'm talking about like, like, because I played um, um, Oblivion before uh, Skyrim, and I mm. loved Oblivion, but and it that's the same kind of open world. Yeah. But you like it didn't have that realism and that sense yeah. of awe when you like yeah. go you crest a, uh, uh, over a mountain and you're like holy crap, this valley ahead of me is freaking gorgeous. And yeah. it's just, it's awe-inspiring. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think yeah, Bethesda so. really fine-tuned it with yeah. Skyrim. Yeah, Skyrim certainly has the most accessible gameplay. Like that, mm-hmm. I think that we talked about accessibility earlier. I would never suggest to the normal person to go play Morrowind, even though I love Morrowind. Mm-hmm. Skyrim is the one I would say, try this first. <laughs> 
I mean, and, and they some, kind of perfected it. Yeah, <laughs> there's some really great like, people that play this game, and like accessibility is a thing. Because if you guys have not seen Shirley Curly, you should go to her YouTube channel and watch her play Skyrim. She's like an 80 year old grandmother that still plays this game. Yeah, and I love her well, so I mean, much. Bethesda released Fallout 4, which mm. is basically using the same engine. It's the same concept. It's a first person game set in a futuristic setting, but there's a reason why we still talk about Skyrim and people aren't still talking about Fallout 4 because they did something with Skyrim that they just haven't been able to replicate yet. Mm. And and what I will say is uh, I recently jumped back into Skyrim like three months ago. I think I told you guys about this. Um, and I will say this, I definitely uh, downloaded about a bajillion mods for it because much like Minecraft, at this point, yeah. I would argue that uh, it's not worth playing the game without mods if you can get access to mods. And much like the Minecraft community, the Skyrim community has created so much additional content that is incredible. And so I think uh, that's another reason that it should go in this game of the year, uh, or game of the decade category rather, because it has so much more to it. It has such a community around it, has so much other content that um, mm. you can play this game forever like for the next 10 years yeah we will still be able to play skyrim the only yeah. time that we will stop playing skyrim is when the next elder scrolls game comes out and what's so cool is like pcs weren't powerful enough to use all the mods that you wanted to five years ago because mm -hmm. there were so many mods you're like the game's beautiful but i can't play because i get two frames per second but as hardware becomes cheaper and it becomes more accessible to get these like high power pcs that could actually run all of these mods that you wanted to use for the last five years yeah it it just keeps the game fresh it's yeah it's it's the gift that keeps on giving yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah so yeah skyrim yeah, i'm excited for it's the up. next one i'm hoping it's in elsewhere or in uh whatever the black marsh i would love to yeah. see yeah. those regions and not another imperial i know right <sighs> <sighs> boring. <laughs> boring it's ah. boring i want ah. i want right, go to so someplace cool exactly the I next go up on our our decade list guys is Red going guards. to be the platform of the decade by the way my hold on i just want to make sure i am still am i still streaming right now my yes. uh yes mm -hmm. okay yes my, my, my preview screen just timed out so oh, i yeah. just wanted to make sure no, you're there good, we man. Go. You're good. came up with an error all right um the next uh category is going to be the platform of the decade all right ash Ooh. And, I, and I, I did use the term platform because I wanted to leave some yep. wiggle room there. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. But um, let's go ahead and talk about what our platforms of the decade are. I mean, okay. So it's hard for me to say that I've played anything. Uh, any, it's hard for me to say that um, like I, I've played overwhelmingly the most games on PC this decade. It's hard for me mm -hmm. to debate that. I have. But I think I, I have to give platform of the decade to PS4 simply because I want to acknowledge the fact that I think that they are the platform that has been routinely Sony has been the platform that has routinely been encouraging I think some of my the, the highest percentage of quality games that I enjoy on that platform. Mm -hmm. um, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, I think that uh, based on that uh, I, I can't argue that there's percentage-wise more games of their total catalog on PS4 than I want to play than percentage-wise the quality games I like on PC has got to be like 0.001% or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, PS4, I think they've just killed it this uh, this generation. I think they, yeah. they really just knocked it out of the park with the amount of quality exclusive games that they help support and publish, um, as well as just the amount of, I think, I don't know, overall um, developers that chose to support that that platform as well. There's just a lot to do on PS4. And their track record is incredible. Like just mm -hmm. recently, um, like I think it was Guinness Book of World Records or whoever um, determined that PlayStation had sold the most consoles of any, you know, mm -hmm. game system ever. Um, I mean, like PlayStation, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, which is arguably their weakest console, but still an amazing console. The PS3, PlayStation wow. 4. They've, <laughs> they've never slipped. They've never slipped, right? Like, well, I mean, compared to every no. other console. No, no, right? I, was, I was like, that's an interesting. I mean, I was like, yeah, I take your point. Like, you're right. And it's it's shocking to say that because I was like, I love And maybe my just PS3. because their catalog wasn't yeah. as, as yeah. big, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I'm with you. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Well, I think Jazzy and I agree. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> the PlayStation is definitely the most uh, exclusive <laughs> games I've played on it this year. Uh, yep. I know the Switch is fairly new, and a lot of people say, you know, the Switch is best. And I agree, the Switch is good. I like the, the portability of it, but like in terms of hardware and the games, PlayStation 4 definitely was my pick. I, I, yeah. I kind of was like, should I put PC? Because I mainly play games on the PC, but like platform just... For this one, it felt like it was a console. Yeah. 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 I'm just going to say three games, all right? Uh, God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, and mm -hmm. uh, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Um, I think that the PS4, compared to the other consoles and everything like that, the PS4 had those games that, for me, were uh, really incredible. Um, yeah, in chat, there's many more that are being mentioned. Yeah. Last of Us is another one to put up there. I'm not a huge Last of Us. I mean, I like Last of Us. I'm not going to say that. I don't like it. But I, I didn't. I wasn't blown away by it. But I still loved it. Um, and that's another Sony exclusive. But, uh, yeah, those three games alone, I think, say to me, that's why I love my PlayStation, is because, like, Horizon... Uh, mm -hmm. In particular, I yeah. fell in love with, and uh, and Spider Man. You know, I'm a Marvel guy. They nailed Spider Man. I mean, Spider Man is so good. It is so good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, PS4. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Like, I I agree. Like when it comes to exclusives, nobody beats PlayStation. Um, I've never been big on uh, like we. I think we talked about this at the start of the uh, year review, but I've never been big on Microsoft's exclusives. You know, whether it be mm -hmm. Halo, whether it be Destiny, I've never really got into Gears, that. You know, not but, Gears fans. Um, thank you, Anwar Rudo, for those biddies. Uh, Appreciate it. Um, yeah, not the biggest Gears fan, but um, not not only are PlayStation's uh, exclusives more appealing to me, but they're my they're more diverse. They mm -hmm. don't just rest on a brand like mm -hmm. Microsoft's has. For the first like 10 years of Microsoft, it was Halo, right? Right. And then when Halo didn't become really viable or for whatever reason they decided like they weren't with it with Bungie or whatever, then they switched it to Destiny or whatever. But they always had like one uh, like flagship brand. Mm -hmm. But PlayStation has been really good at diversifying their exclusives, and I 100% I agree with that. Uh, don't forget about the Uncharted series. That's right. We're talking well, about all these exclusives. I mean, we haven't even yeah. talked about Uncharted. I'll, yeah. I'll say yeah. this. The Ratchet, the only reason I didn't mention it is because I haven't played the one Ratchet and Clank game that came out on PS4 because it came out a while ago and it's a remake of the original. Yeah. But the Ratchet and Clank series is one of my favorite game series, and that is certainly exclusive to Sony platforms. Um, mm, yeah. And another one that really drags me along. Like some yep. of the most memorable games I've played have been on PS4 or PlayStation consoles in general. But for me, um, I definitely did pick PC um, for also me fair. because the last 10 years I've started playing PC games. Um, as a kid, I never grew up with a PC. I didn't even grow up with the Internet. So PC gaming wasn't really a thing for me. Um, it wasn't really until I met you guys that I honestly started playing PC games. Um, and I remember in 2011 2010 you know if you want to go back to the beginning of the decade steam was a different beast there were plenty of games but as far as like an indie game platform goes like uh steam Greenlight wasn't even a thing like mm -hmm. they they tried to green, steam green light because they wanted to open up to the indie sphere and now it's like steam is synonymous with pc gaming but mm -hmm. steam is the platform pc gaming is the platform but it's just become gaming has become so much more accessible to everybody. There are exclusives on consoles, but not only can you play most games on PC, but you can play it cheaper <laughs> and you can yeah. play it modded. Yeah. And you can play these games in ways that you can't play on any other console. You know what I mean? Um, the library of games that I have is due in large part to these sales that you're never going to get for consoles. You know what I mean? You're going to get mm -hmm. a game that's normally 60 bucks for 10 bucks because it's Christmas time. You know what I mean? Um, it's Sendra. Thank you for that $1 and 31 cent donation. Some morning thank nonsense you. from your nonsense. Oh, Sandra, you went to thank sleep and you. woke up to us. I love it. Thank you, Sandra. Um, yeah. So for that, I, I chose PC. Um, it's, I feel like at one point, PC was chasing consoles, right? Mm -hmm. Most games were released on console. You'd be lucky if there would be a game that would be released for Windows, you yep. know, because Steam kind of universalized it. They released their platform on uh, um, 
on Mac and then on Linux. And so now you can play it on all these different platforms. For a while, you had to go to the game store and buy the physical copy. And is this a game for Windows? And you had to install it with your mm -hmm. tray. And now that uh, we have higher speed internets and bigger storage capacity, you could just download these things. Um, Accessibility has become the thing. And now yeah. I feel like consoles are chasing PCs. And That's the consoles true. that we're buying are just glorified PCs that we hook up to ding, our, ding. our That's the TVs. That's the point is that mm -hmm. like, I think because of the nature of how consoles have developed, because every console is essentially a PC, suddenly developers have no real reason not to release it on PC, right? Because it's mm -hmm. not, the conversion is now not gonna necessarily be like, oh, I'm taking this thing that was made for a cartridge-based system that doesn't even use the same type of chipset or whatever. But now it's like, mm -hmm. I mean, it's still got Intel inside or whatever, you know? Like, it's still gonna work the same way, basically. So I feel Never like mind the that fact has helped, that you know? We didn't even touch on the fact that in this decade, we killed the cartridge or the yeah. disc or what have you. We killed the oh. physical copy. Oh, this yeah. next decade, Rip. no more. Like, Rip. I just noticed my computer doesn't have a drive. Doesn't yeah. have a disc drive. I no just point. noticed that. No Ash, point. don't give those. Ash, don't give you those. You don't, you pay extra yeah. for that, Rick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. So going I back would, to your conversation, I would, I I would feel... riot if you were like, Ash, put a <laughs> drive in there. I'd be like, why? Like, well, you no. want to put a hand crank? You want to put a hand crank on your Prius so it can go, huh? What are you talking about? Goodness. What are you saying, um, Jazz? Sorry. Oh, like Price said that we basically flipped the thing. Like consoles, PC was chasing consoles before, and then now consoles are chasing PC. I really believe in that because, like, ten years ago. A PC is still something that, you know, even nowadays, PCs are actually very expensive and consoles were an easy access to get games that you can run at like the highest speeds possible, you know? Mm -hmm. And so now it's just flipped because I don't know if you guys seen the new uh, trailer for the new Xbox. It looks like a tower. It, it literally is. looks yep. like a tower, and I don't know yep. like if it's going to play as a tower. And I actually don't know if Xbox is even going to make consoles in the future because it just seems like all their games are ported to the PC already. What's the yeah, point of a console wonder, besides what's the point? having the accessibility for somebody that's like you know that can't afford one? It's just I feel like in the games for cons in the race for consoles, I feel like PlayStation and Nintendo are probably still going to be in there. Windows is just going to move to its own desktops and that's it mm -hmm. it's it's you very think, interesting you think yeah. xboxes are going to kind of merge and then suddenly the, the blur I the line between will. pc I think it's and probably xbox just gonna turn yeah. into like a like a like a family media center yeah that plays video that. games i can see that you know i think and, that's what's going to that, happen now it'll run that windows would be smart because essentially yeah yeah well can, considering that everybody's like streaming their content now so few yeah. people are actually using cable it would be great if you just had like a entertainment center slash uh, uh g games device you know mm. yeah i mean it, mm. it would make sense for them to yeah. do something like that yep. yeah yeah no it makes sense we should do an all-in-one console that's sort I mean, of that's... pc <laughs> yeah i mean seriously we should yeah i, I tape my xbox to my playstation it's good mm. duct tape's not holding up too well though yeah so that's yeah that's my thoughts Ash, she's got a phone call. He's, uh, we have been waiting on a pizza delivery for an hour and a half. We've gotten the, three crap. drivers now have attempted to pick it up, and apparently the first driver took it and just never showed up. Wow! So, wow, man. Wow, these food delivery services these One days. Wow. Star. <laughs> That's yeah. cool. Um, it's, all right, well, yeah. you guys got enough time then to finish this up, and then we'll send you yeah. off to dinner. Um, last thing before we wrap up, guys, is the most anticipated game of 2020. Yes. What do we got? Ash, start us off. So I'm really hyped on a game called Gods and Monsters. It's made yes. by um, yeah, the same team neat. that worked on Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I'll mention there hasn't been any actual gameplay released of this yet. It's purely the fact that I loved Odyssey a whole lot. And I love that they're going in this very stylized direction with this next one. And they get to break free of the Assassin's Creed IP and sort of work on their own. I feel like they did such a good job with Odyssey that I'm really excited mm -hmm. to see what this team can mm -hmm. do with this. Uh, it looks so interesting. Oh, it looks gorgeous. Own. Oh, yeah. I remember seeing this at E3. Yeah. Now I remember. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'm really excited. I'm really excited for this game. This can. This is a game that I can very easily see not making 2020. I can see it being pushed because there hasn't been any gameplay released yet. Um, yep. But um, I will say that Ubisoft had a really bad year, so I feel like they need a new IP. Um, uh, financially, they had a bad year. They mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. with um, mm -hmm. with the new what's it called? Division? Wildlands. Ghost. Oh. No, Wildlands. Um, not Wild. Ghost Recon. Whatever, Ghost Recon. Ghost Recon. Whatever the new one was. Yep. Missed all projections and it like tanked Oof. their stock and uh, and yeah. So. 
they they need a win, and so I, I, I I'm excited for this one. Um, I'm gonna tell you yeah. right now, Tom Clancy is a Thank boomer brand. And That's a boomer brand. brand. It's true. I'm 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 sick of the Tom Clancy. I'm sick of the bad Tom Clancy games anyway. I'm right. okay with yeah. like bring Splinter bring back Cell. Splinter Cell. Back. There's, <laughs> exactly. There's, ru there's rumors of Splinter Cell coming. Back. Anyway, anyway, Gods and Monsters. But I will say I did have fun playing Wildlands with you guys. That was kind of fun. Yeah. I had yeah, fun. It, was it silly. certainly it was wasn't. Silly. I think yeah. a very great game on its own. But I had yeah. fun yeah. playing. We were playing it like um, it was just cause. You know, that's yeah. you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, so Gods and Monsters, I'm I'm very hyped on. I hope it comes out in 2020. The one that I know is going to come out in 2020, it's going to come out, I think, fairly early on in the year. Minecraft Dungeons. That I'm looks stoked. really fun. I'm stoked to play it with the four of you. Um, yes. And I don't know. I, I love Diablo games. I love Minecraft. And the way that they're making this is a very cool looking style. Um, and yeah, I, I hope that it, it just c turns out to be a really fun game. I hope that... Uh, I don't know, I, I have a small worry that it's going to be like microtransaction to heck, so I hope it's yeah. not. Um, but yeah, it looks it looks really good what they've shown so far, and I believe that they've already started some closed beta stuff, and that it should oh. be coming out. If I remember, like Q1, Q2, like fairly early on in the year. Ooh. So anyway, mm -hmm. I'm stoked. Those are those yeah. are what I'm most stoked for. It looks neato for sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, for Jazzy. For 2020, I am super, super, super excited for Animal Crossing New Horizons. Yes. I have been wanting a new Animal Crossing game for a long time. Uh, the app was a good... It, it, it was a good little a snack. It was, yeah, it was it a was taster. A, it was a but, yeah. teaser, you know? It was like yeah. a snack for... And like I, you eventually lose interest because it's a lot of um, daily quests that mobile games do. Yeah. But this is a, a nice standalone game on the Switch. It's expanded. You actually create your own items, which is pretty neat. Um, you have your own little island that you start off on. You build your own house, and it just has a really good progression from what I've seen. And I will lose all my time to this game, and I know a lot of other people do will too. And I'm just super excited to play it. This it will probably incredible. be the first. This will probably be the first Animal Crossing yeah. that I pick up like at launch in a long yeah. time like since the first yeah. one on gamecube so i'm I, i'm stoked yeah, yeah for i sure. know me and yeah. anna are yeah. gonna re-roll our towns until we get specific fruit fruits oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> so anna wants those keep, peaches she wants those peaches uh i'm i'm just really excited because animal crossing is such a, a lovely wonderful game and it's it's, it's it's a very it's my guilty play I nice, haven't played the other nice. ones in a while, but I'm really excited for it. And then my second game... <laughs> pom Pom said, and Tom Nook capitalism stumped. Yeah! <laughs> I mean, he taught me what mortgage was before I had a mortgage, so... Fair enough, Tom. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Right, you got oh that my gosh! One. Tom got taught you! <laughs> yep. That's great. Uh, and then my second game I'm looking forward to is Cyberpunk, because... God, I love those RPGs. I love you know those crazy? RPGs. Yeah. And it's going to be those two fun. games come out within weeks of each other. I know, that is crazy. and I'm going to lose my mind because this happens every single time. Every February, it's yep. like every February, yep. it's like here's all the games. It's, it's like, feast and famine with I gaming. I hate that. I, I, I do. I hate that because there's literally a drought for yep. like three mm -hmm. or four months, yep. and you're like, why That's is there what happened no new around, game? Uh, around PAX and they always release it while yeah. we're at PAX too. And so November, like, you can't play the game while we're there, and then it's like, yeah. Uh, two months of nothing. November yep. is the same way. Like, no games. November hits. Here's every single game. And I get it. The Christmas season is around the corner, and they want those people to start buying those games. But Jesus. Yeah. Um, I mean, that that is the irony of what we do. People are mm -hmm. like, you guys are gamers. You play everything. We don't. We can only play, yeah. for the most part, what we play on stream. So if five games release in one week, we're playing one of them. And yep. we, that's and it. Because we, we focus it. on multiplayer. It's Sophie's choice. Every yeah. week. Because we yep. focus on multiplayer, we don't really get to play a lot of the single player stuff. So we miss out on a lot of these things that the rest mm -hmm. of y'all play. <laughs> yeah. As yeah, Brian J mentioned, for, uh... that same week, Final Fantasy VII also oh, comes Jesus. out. And no. I believe Watch Dogs, the new one, comes out around that time as well. Gosh. Oh, what's her name? Wow. What was the old lady's name? <laughs> oh, Helen. Helen! Was it Helen oh. Destroyer? Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait. God, there's so many games that come out uh. right after each other. And it's just, it's so infuriating because, like, there's going to be a drought like a month later. Oh and, yeah, for sure. And be like, it's, yep. ugh. It is guaranteed. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, cool. I didn't mean Thanks. to distract. If you have more to say about Cyberpunk. Oh no, I'm just excited for another RPG. That's going to be great. 
Yeah, uh, I enjoyed good. Witcher. This is going to be really fun. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Um, that that was on my list actually as my most anticipated for a minute, but I I pulled it last minute. Damn it, Fringe! Doom Eternal co- comes out the same day as Animal Crossing. I'm gonna. Yeah, I right. have no time. That's the other yeah, one. Jazzy's gonna die. One. Jazzy wants <sighs> both of those so hardcore. <laughs> oh God. Man. Yep. All right. Uh, this is games. gonna be the decade where there are 29 hours in a day. Don't yes. worry. We're gonna so. figure it out. I love that. Uh, All right, Price. What do you got? Yeah. All Man. right. So, so I got I got three on my list. Um, yes, you do. First one being the Avengers game. Uh, not sure if it's coming out this year. Um, you know, we got a it little better. bit of gameplay. It should. Hopefully, it does. But uh, I'm hopeful that this it. Everything that we've seen so far, everything I've heard about it from the people who have gotten to play a little bit of it, because there was like a, mm-hmm. a tech demo at one of the recent game conventions, um, sounds like it's good. Now, we'll say uh, Marvel games have a history of not being good, but then they did a Spider-Man that was good. <laughs> so now I'm hopeful that maybe they got some people on board. They're like, all right, I, let's do it. I think Spider-Man. Insomniac was good. <laughs> Insomniac I, I have- was great, yeah. <laughs> I have some mixed feelings about it. Like I'll yeah. say that the gameplay they've shown looks very good, but mm-hmm. then they ga- went into detail about how the co-op works. And I'll say as a single player experience, it's probably fine. The mm-hmm. co-op, I was hoping it was going to be like, you can do co-op throughout the whole game, but that's not, yeah. they, they, they sort of gave detail how it's like, you go almost like Watch Dogs 2, you mm-hmm. are in this, this uh, single player experience and then you can start a mission and invite friends for that mission. So but like then, Watch Dogs or Anthem or any of those other, yeah, the modern yeah, like division. Anthem, like you stay yeah. in a party. I feel like yeah. if it's like Watch Dogs 2, it's like you're just kicked out of the party after the mission's done, like every mm-hmm. time. Right. You know? And, right. And, it, it, it seems like why even yeah. include multiplayer right. if it's going to be mm-hmm. such a hassle? Well, because that sells yeah. games, Rick. Uh, when, I, does it? Yeah. When you say multiplayer, then it's like, yeah, I got to get it. It's got multiplayer. Hey, Corey Bory. Corey Bory donated $38. Whoa! Let me get you on the tree there, Corey. <gasps> we're at twenty-seven five hundred. Woo! Oh, oh we're at 20, that is such a good number, you guys. Twenty-seven so five. Twenty-seven thousand five hundred dollars raised for the nice. raid uh, for the raid forest. You guys Thank are you. incredible. Thank you. Thank Absolutely you for incredible. For always putting out great videos and yeah. helping me decide which games to play next. You guys are awesome. Aww. Love your content. Looking forward to another great year. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, so. I am, I am saying that I am anticipated for this game, but with a lot of reservations. I don't expect Ooh. it to be good, but I want it to be good. I'm cautiously <laughs> You're an Avengers boy. I am, I am a Marvel fan, you know, just like yeah. I'm a wrestling fan. I always want it to be good. It rarely is, but I always want it to be good. Do uh, or die, Marvel yeah. boy. So, uh, on top of that, to piggyback on what Jazzy said, Cyberpunk, I'm also excited for that. Um, the way I see it is it looks to me like a uh, return to form, kind of like a modern Deus Ex, um, like the original original Deus yeah. Ex, like the first yeah. Deus Ex, because yeah. the newer Deus Ex is, I liked Missing Link. Uh, I thought that the um, the newer ones with Adam Jensen were cool, but they were different. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like Cyberpunk looks more in the vein of like the original Deus Ex, which was like so open and broad and you had so many, so much freedom and so many options that it was almost like overwhelming. Um, yeah. I really, I want that experience again. And I think Cyberpunk might deliver that. So I'm, I'm hopeful. Um, mm-hmm. So lastly, and this one is a question mark because it's contingent on several things, but <sighs> Look, if, what, what? I'm just saying, if let, you're going to add hypotheticals, I can it, add my own too after well, that. No, <laughs> my, yeah, yeah. my hypothetical is based on because the consoles are coming out, right? So, mm-hmm. um, so Xbox, the new Xbox is coming out. So that means the new PS5 is coming out. Uh, and, um, Horizon 2 is allegedly going to be a launch title for the PS5. Uh, ever since Horizon uh, Zero Dawn came out, um, people have been like, where's the sequel? Where's the sequel? Where's the sequel? And very early on into the development of Horizon, um, it was basically uh, known uh, and talked about that um, the studio were working on it, but that it was being held for the PS5 launch. That like we were so far yeah. into the PS4 life cycle, they knew they had a hit with Horizon, so they were like, let's put push that off and make the sequel come out with the um, new console. So Horizon Zero Dawn, potentially one of the best uh, series made in recent history in terms of like a whole new IP, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I love that game. And I only played it this year. I only played it this year because I borrowed it from these suckers and then from uh, one of our uh, glorious uh, uh, fans sent me a copy actually. And um, I checked it out. Incredible. 
I'm absolutely it's a good incredible. Game. Absolutely. Did you it's know just, as much as I? Oh, go ahead. Uh, did you know that Death Stranding actually uh, built their game on top of their engine? Really? It oh, doesn't no, surprise me. Yeah. Yeah. It does not surprise the, me um, looking at the yeah. settings. Yeah. It's Frostbite. Hideo, Hideo right? Kojima, he, um, no, it's not Frostbite. Frostbite is no. DICE, oh. um, who yeah. did Battle... Oh, uh, wait, not, I'm sorry, not, mm. uh, what, what, what's it called? I don't know what their engine's called, um, but yeah, Guerrilla um, Games, they, uh, Hideo Kojima went to them when he joined up with Sony. He was like, uh, please let me borrow your engine. It's it's the only way that I can build, like, make this game in time. Um, Thank you, yes. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And another interesting thing as well, the head of Guerrilla Games is um, has now sort of He's left Guerrilla Games to become the head of Sony America, basically. Oh, oh wow. wow. Good for yeah. them. And, and I want to say this about Guerrilla Games. Kudos to y'all for sticking it out, because they've made some incredible games in the past that have gotten a little bit yeah. overlooked. And uh, the the one that jumps out to me is Red Faction Guerrilla, which oh, yeah. is mm -hmm. incredible. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, that, if you if you go back and play that game, it was so far ahead of its time. And like, I don't know, it's, it's pretty dang great. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, yeah. so... As much as I would love Horizon Zero Dawn to release this year, like, my only question would be, like, why haven't they announced anything? Like, E3, Video Game Awards, something. You know, like, for uh, them to announce the game and then also release it the same year, like, I can't think of any games, especially a game that big, that has done something like that. You know but it's a console launch. launch. It's a console launch, yeah. though. Like, that's, you have to remember, it's a console launch, so that you can't talk about the games until they talk about the console and say, here's also, what's coming out. That's not also, true because I think The Last of Us 2 is definitely going to be a PS5 launch and they've been talking about it for nearly two years now. I think they right. pushed it to PS5. Yeah, think they but it was, it, it was PS4 and then got pushed to PS5. Yeah. So they started announcing also, it and they were like, this is a PS4 game. And they're like, wait, it's going to be PS5. Also, you're going back to like E3. I feel like a lot of these big companies, they don't really use E3 as their like... Um, debut for games anymore it just seems like they want to do their own thing yeah. because it's probably cheaper mm -hmm. so i'm sure they're probably going to have their own event where they're going to start announcing these things either around no, e3 it, or yeah. after e3 no of course yeah. and sony did the same thing this year they, they didn't announce at e3 but they did do mm -hmm. their own thing mm -hmm. yeah but so they're still gonna they're still gonna do a thing where they announce it i think that it's very unlikely that they will just drop horizon zero dawn out of nowhere without they might. any announcement they might yeah, that's they the thing won't. It, as much as I would love it, I don't see that happening. Well, and, and hey, fair enough. Th th this, this is kind of like like all of the um, all of the websites that we were looking at, where it's like most anticipated games of 2019, mm -hmm. where they were like, um, you know, like uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2. It's like, no, of course that's not coming out. I just I don't see how they could possibly release Horizon Zero Dawn with absolutely no mention of it, mention of it up until December of 2019. That that would that's like crazy ambitious well and and, and again like the only reason i'm saying it like i said is because it's been said that it's going to be an announce or a, a launch title and we know that the consoles are it around has the corner. not i'll just yeah. put that out there but it is not officially who said it's going to be a launch title? No, 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 is, i'm not saying i'm not saying it's official jeez calm down i'm you saying you just said it in a very I, official I way i didn't I didn't say, I'm. well, then I take it back and I apologize. The only reason I'm saying this is because when I was looking up Horizon Zero Dawn sequel, right after I played Horizon Zero Dawn, it was uh, looked, uh, they apparently said that they're in the early stage of development and that it is likely to be a PS5 launch uh, title and it was held back from going over to the PS4. That's all I'm saying, all right? Now. Say that's, is that like a Reddit thread? Like. No, it's just, no, it's a number of uh, like IGN and crap. Um, okay, but I, I, I can see you no, know, I can see an article like that coming out but. last year when the game released, and that's just their like their their um their, their rumors, speculations, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. But since things have developed, an entire year's gone by and nothing has been announced for it. I can see them being like, you know, we were probably wrong. Okay, so it might not come out this year. It's still on my list. <laughs> that's all I'm yes, saying. Fair all right, enough, fair enough. <laughs> right, like I'm, I'm not I just, saying I just, wanna, I just wanna temper any expectations for anybody who may be watching and thinking like, Oh crap! It's gonna come out this year. What have you heard? I just feel like we haven't heard anything. I feel like y'all are like <laughs> smacking me, like, "No, you broke the rules, Price. How dare you put that on there?" I'm like, "That's it. I thought it might come out because it's console." I, I, I come was out. just wondering if you read something I didn't. Yeah, <laughs> right. Goodness. Like, I was like, "Price has got the inside scoop. He's 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 hot, he's tight with Guerrilla Games." Goodness. I love that game. I, I do want to replay it. My goodness. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm very excited to play God of War two and Spider Man two as well, Price. That's my right? most anticipated. I want those games well. too. All right, um, 
My game, th this is actually a game that was on a lot of the most anticipated 2019 lists. If you actually go look it up, it is The Last of Us Part Two. That is my pick. Um, a game that seems like it's going to be very different than The Last of Us One, um, where it's like The Last of Us One, it was like zombies. And in this one, it's definitely the people that seem to be the threat and the weird cults of people that have sort of like manifested in the wake of this zombie apocalypse, um, where these like weird, um, uh, spore infected people uh, are, are run amok you know um, but I really loved the story from The Last of Us and mm. I keep talking about how I appreciate like concise games these days like I don't want to I don't have time frankly to play like a 40 hour game you know I'm more than happy to just like have a 10 hour game where I can beat it in a weekend and mm -hmm. The Last of Us 2 did that so well where it's like there was no fluff in that game it was just like it was such an amazing ride from beginning to end and I have faith that Naughty Dog is going to be able to deliver with The Last of Us 2 they haven't indicated that um, in any way will this like deviate from the incredibleness that was The Last of Us 1 so I'm um, really looking forward to this one uh, this is definitely one that did get pushed back from the PS4 I was, to I was the PS5 I was gonna say it got can, am I having flashbacks here didn't Rick pick this as his most anticipated in 2018? Well, I mean, it's fair I because they did have. push it back. Yeah, they did push it they back. Did. They yeah. did. And um, yeah, which means that now I got to buy a new console to play this game. <laughs> uh, and I I'm will say probably going to do that. The best thing I love about The Last of Us is that it is the most unique zombie. Uh, it really like, is. Origin. It's so unique. And it's just like it's it's the most possible zombie outbreak. It really is. Ever. Like though that that spore because is these a things real exist. thing, and they actually like, exist in the rainforest, yes. which is our charity. Right. Uh, but yes, <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> Seek the rainforest so, so cool. that we can have a Last of Us situation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you go online, like there there are videos. I won't show you guys because it's gross. But yeah. yeah, there are these spores that infect. Um, uh, they're parasitic spores that infect uh, insects, and then they control them. They make insects do these ridiculous things, like grab on to like dandelions and fly mm -hmm. to new places to spread their spores. It's wild and it's yeah. gross. But it, like Jasmine said, it's it's gonna happen. No, it's not going to happen. But it's it. I mean, it, it is the most likely. It is the most likely zombie scenario. Yeah, it's it's true. It's yeah. really cool though. I do like the uh, unique look of all the zombies. Um, I I never really finished Last of Us, so I am excited to play that game before Last of Us Two comes out. Oof. Oh, Last, you never finished the Last of Us? It's, it's a rough. Oh my it's, a rough either, it's, either it's, either it's really actually. hard to finish Oof. games these days for me. Yeah, because like if well, I'm that not playing it for the channel. I am not just finishing it's it. Hard. Yeah. That 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 one's just that one's just rough. That one's just yeah. Ooh, it hits you. Um, Firestar yeah, asked it's about good. Last of Us factions and if we think they'll include Last of Us factions in or factions in Last of Us, Last of Us Two. I, correct me if I'm wrong. Factions I never really was the factions. That was the multiplayer mode, right? Yeah. It's a DLC. And so yeah. Uh, Firestar, I hate to break it to you, but they did officially announce there's going to be zero multiplayer in Last of Us Two. I'm fine so, yeah. with that. I, I think yeah, single player uh, games have a really good narrative and I enjoy those type of things. If there's a game that has a multiplayer aspect, I usually don't play it because yeah. sometimes but people I, on the I, internet are just rude. I don't want to deal I, with I, it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I'll point out, and to your guys' credit, as far as platform of the decade goes, going back to the PS4 and the exclusivity mm -hmm. with it, I mean, it's it's hard to get hype on games that aren't exclusive to PS4. I'll be real. If you go back and look at my uh, my most anticipated games, a lot of them are probably going to be PS4 exclusives. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. another example of like PlayStation have exclusives locked down, man. They are so good at it. Yeah, that's true. They they do a really good job funding really, really interesting and great projects. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? This this is like complete speculation but i really wonder how much of that is like a uh, japanese mindset mentality like it, it really seems like like particularly with nintendo and their um penchant for putting the uh quality of the content before like their desire to recoup any costs or anything we want to make a good game before we're even concerned about like how this is going to affect our bottom line kind of thing you know whereas microsoft being an american company is more attuned to be like well do we want to devote time and resources into this if we don't know it's going to be a hit that maybe sony being a japanese company is willing to take risks that microsoft the american company wouldn't do mm -hmm. yeah for sure hmm. oh, okay good talk 
People want to uh, correct that apparently Last of Us is coming out on PS4, not PS5. Apparently. I mean, I'm okay, sure well, it's going I, to have I, be exactly like The Last of Us 1, where it will release on, on PS3. Probably on both. And then there'll be the HD version yeah. on yeah. PS4. Yep. Yeah. 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 All right, cool, yeah, cool, well, this, um, like every single year, we, we managed to talk a lot. We started at like six. It is 9.47 now. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, it never ceases to amaze me how we can just we talk have and a talk lot of and talk. Opinions. And I feel like we kept pretty on point this year, yeah. too. Uh, <laughs> well, we kept on topics for the because most part. I mean, we, I like mean, the we, first thing we, we talked, talked about, about the games that we were talking about. Like, well, for the first like twenty minutes, we talked about something that like we didn't even uh, plan on talking. Well, about. Well, that's why I wanted to get out of the way. I said, let's <laughs> talk about the stuff that we are that isn't you know associated with the content that we're we're going to discuss. I I I allotted for that. We get it. We get uh, it. But, but that is our year in review, guys. I'm sure that you guys have a lot of your own opinions. I'm curious to find out what they are. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really curious to see what you guys think about this upcoming decade of gaming. And I can't wait to see where we are in another decade uh, once we're in our 40s and um, things are just completely out of our um, our comfort zone. It, it'll exactly. be real fun. <laughs> Dude, so, I, can't, all VR. I can't wait. Finally, by, <laughs> by the next decade, we'll finally have Elder Scrolls 6. It'll be great. <laughs> and Half Life Three, maybe. all right. Maybe yeah. we'll, we'll, all be, we'll all be living in a player, a Ready Player One world, and uh, <laughs> drinking our dinners out of a bag. I'm already there, um, dude. I'm already there. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, you are the hippest of the four of us. That's for sure. You're on the, you got that inside track. With Drink the your food. food. Drink your food, bro. Yeah. All right, guys, uh, that is going to wrap it up, though, um, for our year in review. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. It has been so much fun. 